today's game pits two high-scoring offenses that get their job done in very different ways. For Kings Point, they have rolled to an undefeated season on the strength of a front wall that dominates the line of scrimmage and has led to a smooth transition from the departure of All-American running back Wes Stearns to this year's offensive leader, Drew Beers. For WPI, it's a more wide-open style of offense led by the multi-dimensional skills of Jason Woolley. Although WPI has struggled early to find their rhythm under first-year head coach Kevin Moore, they remain a dangerous opponent, as evidenced by their 41-point explosion a week ago against Norwich. Today is the next step for WPI as they host Kings Point in a critical Freedom Football Conference matchup next here on Sports Channel. And welcome everyone to Alumni Field at, in Worcester, Massachusetts on the campus of Worcester Polytechnic Institute for the game between WPI and Kings Point of Kings Point, New York. John Clayton is my partner in crime. I'm Dave Long. And John, uh, even though both teams come into this ball game undefeated in the Freedom Football Conference, it has a little bit different implication after being the feature game last year in the Freedom Football Conference. Worcester won the game. They went to the NCAA tournament. Kings Point went to the ECACs where they won the ball game. But today is a little bit different. It certainly is, David. I think Kings Point is on the same kind of role they had going last year. In fact, they've extended their winning streak to nine games coming into this game tonight. WPI, on the other hand, is in a little bit of a, an unbalanced situation right now. They have a new coach, new situation. They won their first game last week. They're coming in at one and three. It's not the battle of powers we saw a year ago until Worcester shows that they can play at the same level with Kings Point. Of course, director, thank you. of course, John, Kings Point had to weather some changes of their own. They lost West Stearns. They were led by the All-American running back, also an All-American center, and Eric Nichols. They had a little bit of a change, but Drew Beers, the fullback, or last year's fullback, stepped in a tailback and really hasn't missed a beat. They haven't missed a beat because of Beers' ball carrying, but also they've had some changes up front, and they've meshed very nicely. We have Rob Laws playing center now, replacing Nichols, and Saul Capek is stepped right in. He's a co-side of All-America before the season's begun. They haven't missed a beat offensively. And of course, Beers had a big game. He almost eclipsed Stern's record. Last time we saw Stern's play, he racked up 254 yards. Beers had 250 a week ago. A big game we saw a year ago in which Kings Point demolished Coast Guard 42 to nothing. Their offense has not changed, and that's part of Charlie Provada's theory. If you can't run, then try to run again. If that doesn't work, then maybe we'll try to run. And every once in a while, I might mix in a pass there, but the line, certainly the earmark on, on both sides of the ball, defense has really shown their stuff this year, too. They have. In the case of Kings Point, they haven't allowed a touchdown on a drive from outside the 20-yard line. The points they've given up have really been the result of turnovers. An exceptional job by their first-team defense, largely by the defensive line. And in case of uh, WPI, now they've had some big changes. New coach this year, their offensive, they were hit big time with graduation, particularly in the offensive line. They lost 11 players from the 22 starters, but when you think about it, the losses were the kind that normally wouldn't affect the team. They have all their skill players back. This shows the value of the line and the defensive secondary. They've lost people in those areas. They're struggling. They're one and three right now. Kevin Morris does have his first win. They beat Norwich last week convincingly, 41-21. Now they have to see if they can get that kind of consistency going against Kings Point. And of course, the big guy for them is is Jason Woolley. He's a running back. Really just got on track last week when they exploded for 41 points against, uh, against Norwich. He's the fourth leading rusher all time, ECAC Division III football, so he really has a record to stand on. He's also the career scoring leader here, over 300 points. He just hasn't had that kind of consistency. Last week was a start. Perhaps he can continue with a little bit of help from the rest of the backfield. Okay, there you have it. As we have the matchup between WPI and West and King Point, excuse me, in uh, here right here on Sports Channel. Game time is just a few minutes away. Kick returners. And John, what do you expect WPI to do coming right out of the uh, right out of the fray? Well, with the offensive flurry they had last week against Norwich, Dave, again, they won 41-21. I would imagine they'd attack right away. They have a real nice balance between the pass and, and the O'Connell line. And O'Connell drives the ball deep to about the 10-yard line. Lohan has it. He's going right back up the middle. He's got a hole. He's hit it about the 25, and there is a pile, as one might expect, right there at the 30-yard line as he drives ahead with the tackle. Charlie Lewis with a hit that I saw first, number 30 from Kings Point. And, and Merrick, Merrick Kelly also, WPI on offense. Tony Minta, Bill Terrell, Ted Brown, Fred Bradley, and Don Perry. The offensive line, the unit might have come together last week. Kevin Duffy, the tight end. Johnson and Lohan are the wideouts. Tony Badula, Jason Woolley, and Tom Burns are the run back. Here's a fake reverse. The fumble in the first play going down about the 10-yard line, and Tony Padula got it, lost it, and it goes out of bounds, and it looks to me like Worcester has recovered the ball, but they are in big trouble. That is a 25-yard loss in the first play of the ball game. Tried to get a little fancy coming out of the blocks, David. Didn't work out for them. 
And here's that tough defensive unit for WPI. Brody, Shell, and Ken Chorus are the front line. They use four linebackers. Hoyt, Wheeler, Bachman, and Monson. Monson, the Freedom Football Conference Player of the Week last week, saved the uh, game with a, with a blocked field goal. And Simpson, Keynes, Hanson, and Holman in the backfield. A big 23-yard loss on the play, David. Okay, Burns over center. What do you do here? They're looking to Woolley on the counter. Woolley has got some running room. He bounces outside, and he's going to try and outrun two or three defenders. Hanson on the tackle, and number eight, Mike Holman, kind of stretched it out as Woolley took it up to about the nine-yard line. Looked like he had a little bit of room outside. Nice play also by Hanson to string it out here. Hanson, the cornerback, comes up. Woolley thinks he has an opening. Hanson's the run right there, number two, who strings it out, forces him wide when Woolley could have broken it upfield, and then the pursuit comes across to stop the for really no gain. Actually, it was Brian Simpson who made the play. Hanson is the guy who stretched it out. Ball is set on. Actually, at the uh, bad spot, ball goes to the seven. So we're looking at third down and a whole lot. And Burns is going to go into the shotgun. And now there's a whistle on the play. Timeout. Not a place to make a mistake. Good timeout, John. Even though coaches don't like to see it this early in the game. There has some pressure. Been some pressure on Burns replacing all-time passing leader David Sepatelli here at WPI. And we'll be back with more action after this break. This quality time was made possible by GMAC. Wow! With financing and leasing that can be arranged for your new GM vehicle fast, right at the dealership. Because GMAC believes you should be out enjoying your new car instead of waiting for it to be financed. GMAC, the expressway home. We're, we're back at third and 33. Burns in the shotgun. And there is a, a jump right off the bat. Tony Minto jumped early. We're going to move it back half the distance to the goal line, most likely, so it goes back to the three. Stretch it out to third and 36. Really can't imagine a worse scenario for Kevin Morris here. Big home game, big advantage against a tough opponent. They're digging themselves a real deep hole in 30 and 36. Sorry, John, and the field position also becomes a problem now. Maybe we might see a quick kick coming out of here. Who knows? But they're also, Kings Point more than likely is going to have the ball inside the 50, and they're a team that just pounds away. It's perfect field position. And you're right, it is a bad start for uh, WPI. They're going to come out. They're not going to go to the shotgun. Burns is going to be over center. They're in the power eye. Willie the deep man. Padula up front. And there we go. And it looks... And Burns is tackled in the end zone. A few players down there. Number 46, Steve Monson, player of the game last week with the big save, blocked the field goal to preserve the win. Two-point win over St. John Fisher for Kings Point. And here he is again, scoring right off the bat. Ben Curris also in the defensive end, number 47, really working right over center, David, as you said, rather than the shotgun. But there's just no containment by the WPI offensive line. Burns is looking to try and roll out. Can't roll away from trouble. There's Curris right in his face. Curris with a big hit just overwhelms the blocker. In this case, Tony Minto pushes him back and picks up the two-point safety. Kings Point on the board thanks to the defense. That's Kings Point's first safety of the year. And Monson continues, as we said, his good play. John, you know, they don't want to give up two points, but in this case, maybe that's uh, almost a blessing in disguise. Who knows what might have happened? P punt blocked or get a bad kick. Guys want to hurry if they're kicking. They've only got 10 yards kicking it from the two-yard line or so. So, you know, perhaps you got to look to the silver lining, and perhaps that's it. That's true, David. As we had mentioned, they were certain to surrender a terrible field position if they were to punt out of their own end zone. Big play by Curris, the senior defensive end, three-time letter winner for the Mariners, comes up with the big play to put them on the board early. And of course, the play will come from the 20-yard line. And uh, it's kind of unclear. I don't see I don't see Steve Adamo on the field. He is the first-team punter. Stan Farrell, check that. Adamo being the kicker. Stan Farrell is going to punt it. Take it off from the 20-yard line. And it is a good punt. And a spiral down. They take it at the 30-yard line. He's going right up the field. And Simpson has got plenty of room on the left-hand side. He's taking it down the sideline past the 30. Takes it down to about the 25-yard line. John, big hole right up the middle. Big hole and a big saving play by Farrell after making the free kick in the open field. He was the one who stayed back and made the play. Simpson saw an opening down the left side. David broke it right away. Farrell was able to slide and contain. Let's take another look at that play. Look at the blocking right up front. Wide open. No one in the picture. 
He just takes it off 35, shuts him down, and he just takes it down the sideline. He's the break and goes left now. Here's the pursuit, but Simpson Farrell is the one who waits and comes back over, takes him down after a 45-yard pickup by Simpson. And Simpson kind of turned his ankle, limping gingerly on the sideline. And now one man back, and they go to Beers right up the middle, and he's open, and that really is the bread and butter play for Kings Point as he takes it up to about the 22-yard line, about a six-yard gain to open up on first down. Defensive play made there by Matt Mercer. Matt Mercer will be the big man on defense. Here's the main man on offense, Drew Beers, number 24. Moved back from the, from the fullback spot. Mike Raganese and Brian Clark in the backfield. Kevin Fury, Wendell Porter, the wideouts in the front, and the Joe Kemp, the tight end, swearing in, swearing in Christie, Kemp, Kapek, and Laws. And Beers takes it right up the middle to about the five-yard line, and they're just pounding away. As you said, John, that's what they like to do, run inside the tackles and just try and bowl you over. 20-yard pick. I'd like to take another look at this. The blocking in the middle is, is, is critical, and you see Rob Laws with a big, big penetration into the WPI defense. Beers just breaks it quickly to the left, gaping hole in the, in the WPI defensive line. As we said, Beers last year was the blocking back for West Stern. <laughs> now he's picked up. That's got to be a blocking back and then come in to be the feature back. And I can think of Marcus Allen when he's the USC block for Charles White. And here we go to Beers once again. And he just takes it in and goes in for the score. Just like that, three plays from the 22-yard line. And Kings Point jumps out to an 8-0 lead right off the bat. Two minutes and 23 seconds into the game. Kings Point has already forged an eight-point lead. Drew Beers again just taking advantage of the great penetration by his offensive line. Take another look here. Craig Moody is down in the end zone. All he can do is hand off, and Beers has his choice of holes. Actually, just drives right through. Key block again, number 66. Tom Doobie also trying to Sal trying to hold with him. a big block. Okay, it's Craig Moody. There's Craig Moody down. Looks like he's got uh, winded, but with the score eight to nothing, let's take a break. We'll be back. but a few hours, unless it's a Grand Prix started with a genuine Delco Freedom battery. Delco's rated tops for taking the pole position in starting power and excelling in reserve capacity helps keep your engine in the race for a longer, more reliable life. AC Delco. It's like buying time. Now through December 4th, get started with up to $14 cash back on Delco Freedom batteries. Okay, play is still stopped as Craig Moody is down in the end zone off the touchdown by Drew Beers. And uh, Mike O'Connell is on the field ready to kick or to attempt to kick, but uh, things are moving along uh, at a gingerly pace out there. But, uh, John, this is not the start the WPI wanted to see happen. It certainly isn't, David. We've had six plays from scrimmage, and they've already forged an 8-0 lead. Two points from the defense, six from the offense. Take another look at the touchdown here. We talk about the offensive line blocking. Sal Capek here just stands up his defender. It is Mercer who is playing up on the line. Straightens him right up, and Beers has his choice of holes, as you said. Steams in from five and a half yards out. That's his eighth touchdown of the year, and route to what looks to be a spectacular season. And WPI, of course, John, plays only two linebackers. They try and take it away at the line of scrimmage in the 5-2 format. And uh, it, the problem is, once you can push those guys back, there's not a lot back there. And that has been the case in the first three plays, right up the gut, right at the linebackers. And Kings Point just has an incredibly crisp point of attack. When they hit the point, they break through. As you said, David, there's really not much in the back to contain them. Okay, Moody is uh, Moody is now off the field, and O'Connell launches into it, and it is good, and that pushes Kings Point out to a nine nothing lead with less than three minutes to go in the ball game. And John, so much for the safety being a blessing in disguise. <laughs> it didn't take long. Again, once Kings Point got his hands on the ball, they've been known for explosive offense. Charlie Provider's philosophy again is run, run, run. With a guy like Drew Beers in your backfield, that certainly is not an unwise tack. And take. Kevin Moody appears to be. Uh, not too badly shaken up after he was down. Probably got his bell rung. He's the fourth leading tackler on the team with 21 tackles for the season. So that would be a big loss to the defense. And uh, it will be the Kings Point defense back on the field. We talked about the problems they've created for teams. They do not view defense as something you sit back and let happen. They are very aggressive. They attack defensively, as we saw. I think maybe WPI got carried away a little bit with some, you know, a little bit of razzle-dazzle on that first play. Dug themselves a big hole with a 23-yard loss. 
couldn't recover from it. Let's see what they can do now if they get a fresh offensive start. Of course, the other thing, you know, most coaches will tell you, if they can control the ball, then that's obviously going to help your defense. And King's Point defense, I think, has been a beneficiary of their ability to just run and run and run and not put the ball down people's throat and just hold on to the ball. Keep your defense fresh. It does. And again, they, they've done such a good job on defense. You have to wonder who's punishing who when they're out on the field. Okay, O'Connell getting ready to kick off. Anta and Lohan back. And he gets it off. This time it's coming to Anta, the sophomore. He fumbles it at about the 20. He's going back up the middle. Now he cuts outside with lots of room. He's to the sideline. And he goes out of bounds at about the 38-yard line, driven out of bounds by Bryant Buddy, who was really, John, the last man. And he was quicker than I thought. I thought Anta had the sideline and was going to take off and go a lot farther. And take another look here. Anta, the Freedom Football Conference Rookie of the Year, year ago great quickness sees the opening here they set up with the left hand return he breaks to the left and as you said david he had plenty of room if it wasn't for buddy with that last tackle he may have turned the corner hold of franco harris ran out of bounds from the sideline the wpi is going to start at the 43 yard line and they go to pass right off the bat and there's swedick and he is going to just fall ahead of the yardstick to about the 46 yard line david swedick who's been injured a little bit but he picks up the what looks to be a first down. Take another look here. Burns with a quick set. One step drop, and he has Swedek, who again was was having trouble with a foot injury, is back in the starting lineup as a last minute right in. Takes that quick pass and forges upfield enough for the first down. They're taking the measurement now. And good pursuit from the inside linebacker's spot as uh, Steve Monson once again got back into the play, which really went right over directly over his head. That was a nice job. And we have another first down, or at least the first first down for WPI. 12-15 remains in the first quarter. We've seen a lot of action so far. Kings Point or U.S. Merchant Marines Academy, they are leading it 9-0. Worcester's got a chance to uh, put themselves on the board, and I think they really have to establish themselves here. The problem they've had is establishing the run. They've balanced pretty much equally with the pass, mostly of necessity. And they're fiddling around with the fake shotgun. Now Burns is back over center. We've got Padula in motion. Willie 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage, and that's what they want to do, give him running room. He's out over the 45, and he goes down, flag on the play. They really give him a lot of room, John, to pick his spots, and he takes it up to about the 43-yard line. Didn't have enough room. In that case, Monson, once again in the pursuit, is able to pull him down. And it looks like the penalty is going to be against the guys in maroon and white. And it uh, seems to be a no-brainer what you're going to do. If you're going to take that one or not, probably a hole. Anything in that general area generally is. And there it is. Take another look here at the play. Again, Jason Woolley starting from 10 steps, probably 10 yards deep in the backfield. They give him room to read the blocks. He does get the good break and turns it upfield, but there's Monson with the pursuit, able to trip him up and pull him down, something that did not happen much his first two years at WPI. Jason Woolley troubled somewhat by injuries last year, hampered again this season, really hadn't had a great game until last week when he picked up 139 yards against Norwich. And what they like to do is give him the ball and let him pick his spots. And once again, the multiple shifts. Now it's Padula, the only set back. Woolley in the slot. Here's the reverse to Woolley on the right-hand side. It burns out there. Blocking Woolley is free. He's out over the 50, and he takes it down to about the 43-yard line, which is where the last play ended. But that picks him up a good, uh, about a 15-yard gain. Gets him, back to, gets him back to about the original line of scrimmage. And there is a, uh, it was a double reverse. Actually, it knocked him out of bounds to the original line of scrimmage at the 10-yard line. Goes to Badula first, and then the double reverse. I like it when quarterbacks are out there blocking the head to reverse. We'll take a look here, see if we can see Burns stick his head in there with those big defensive horses. Take takes out, the man down. Took out Monson. Okay, we got a second and 10. Badula, the only one. Woolley in the slot, now he's in motion. He's coming to the near side of the field. They're looking to pass it, going, looking for Woolley in the slot. And he bounces it in front of Johnson at about the 30-yard line. Tough pass, John, when you're rolling on your inside hand. To throw that ball out into the flat because you got to get something on it. Again, uh, Burns has a tough act to follow coming as he does a year after Dave Sepatelli, who's the all-time leading passer at WPI, rolling against his throwing hand. Had good luck from Padula to free him up. He had plenty of time, just threw it short. Looks like one of those one Guzman fastballs we've been seeing in the World Series. <laughs> Actually, actually, John Smoltz, he bounces in front of the plate. Anyway, okay, third and ten. Worcester's going to bring it out. 
looking to establish something. Play will take off from about the 46 and a half yard line. Padula, the only one, only single setback. Woolley and Swedek in the slot. Four wide receivers. The rush is on, and it's an inside screen to Woolley, who's outside into the 40, and he takes it up at about the 38 yard line. Bounced out of bounds by Brian Simpson, who, of course, had the big punt return earlier, or at least the run back off the safety kick. And now he stops Woolley short of about two yard line. But nice disguise play. Woolley kind of came out of nowhere, John. Well, this guy's play. The problem is that once Willie makes the catch, he is completely naked in the middle of the Kings Point secondary. He has nowhere to go, no help to turn to. It's just he and a foot race. Actually gets a little help from the official there. Took down one of the blockers, and as he tries to turn the corner, good pursuit, takes it out of bounds. They will be short of the first down. Outran Alex Wheeler there, used his speed. The senior from Agawam, Mass, fourth leading rusher in New England, in uh, New England Division Three history. And uh, he's, he has not really gotten off the mark yet. Although last week, as you mentioned, John, 130-some yards and uh, really was the first advantage. Good receiver, too. What they really like to do is get him the ball in open areas and let him use his elusiveness. He is the leading receiver, in fact. Uh, Burns uses both Steve Johnson and Swedish as his wideouts, but uh, really is the leading receiver. He's 14 passes in four games. Okay, here's the first tough call of the game, John. What did you do? You've got... Uh, Knowing what Kings Point can do with their punishing ground game, uh, fourth down and about a yard, what would you do? Here at home, you got to go for it. They've just got all momentum turned against them. This is a key play for them if they can punch it across for the first down. And they've got Leahy is in the game, replacing Woolley as a tailback. They're going to go for the power. More than likely in this situation, John, they like to go right in over the guards. And Padula has been their short yardage guy. And they're going to go to the pass on the roll, and it goes out to Swedek, and he throws it behind him. Kind of a curious call. He tried to deceive them, but uh, you got to go bang, bang on that one. The pass just went behind Swedek. You even have to question the pass route in this case, or at least the position of the pass, because if you're going to throw it, you want a little safety valve there. He threw it to the inside instead of the outside. Could have allowed Swedek to catch it and go out of bounds. Instead, he threw it back, where it really was a risk of its being intercepted. Of course, maybe the original option was that he was going to roll out. He had the option to pass it or throw it. I mean, pass it or run it. But uh, that all is for naught as Kings Point takes over on downs. And uh, I think it's a big situation where WPI defense has got to hold. We're just four minutes into the game. There's an awful lot of football to be played. Ryan, Ryan Clark brings him out over center. Beers and Raganese in the back in the backfield. This goes to Beers once again. He's over the 40. He's over the 45, and he takes it up all the way to about the 47-yard line. Kevin Renucci on the tackle, as well as Fu Win also on the tackle. You can see the strength of Drew Beers in that case. Take another look here. As he hits the line of scrimmage, he's really almost wrapped up by Fu Win, number 55. But Beers is just able to shake him just with one move of the leg, pulls away and heads deeper into the secondary, picks up an extra five or six yards with the second effort. Here's win with the hit tries to wrap him up gets one foot but beers is able to regain his balance keep his feet and move downfield for the big game matt, matt mercer mercer's also there and look at the blow he delivers on minucci picks up 10 just shy of 10 yard line 10 yards it's going to be second and one but uh, drew beers has stepped in and really done the job so far for uh, king's point the uh you know, John, the thing is, is the guys in the secondary are making a lot of tackles at this point. Yeah. Renucci does make a lot of tackles. We talked about the uh, WPI defense, really. They try and stop you at the line. If you crack the line, it's off to the races. Those little guys out there in the secondary are trying to chase down guys who outweigh them by 20 and 40 pounds. And the uh, engineer defense is very tight in, about 10 guys inside of about 7 yards. And they're almost playing in linebacker positions, the defensive backs. One wide out, Fury to the right, a little jump, no whistle. And they go right up. First man through is uh, Mike Raganese, and he pounds away. I think he took it up over midfield, certainly got the first down. Kings Point once again on the march. Again, it's all power blocking, straight ahead stuff, David, with the WPI defense jammed in, looking to try and stop the first down rush here. No chance at all. Takes it right through the line, as you said, just following his blockers. Doesn't even have to break into the WPI defense. Just follows the blocks, great penetration, picks up five yards. I wonder if Charlie Pavada's name is right there on the Woody Hayes, Woody Hayes Hall of Fame as disciples, because we're talking three, year, three yards and a rug burn here on the carpet at the WPI, but they are just doing the job in the offensive line. And they go once again to Beers over left tackle. He breaks out over the 45. Flag on the play, but he just pounds ahead. Eight-yard gain. And they are just blowing the engineers off the line of scrimmage. Offensive line at the point is just doing a great job. This, the front five, it's just all power blocking again, David. No, no attempted subterfuge whatsoever. They're just going straight ahead. 
maybe a preliminary indication on a face masking call, but watch here. Again, handed off to Beers, basically untouched in this case. He's just letting his line do the work, running right through. A lot of the guys from WPI are in position where they're reaching and making arm tackles. They just can't get squared up to Beers and try and take him down with their body. A lot of reaching and grabbing. And I think it was Robert Laws on the hold as he used his hands to kind of open up, push someone to the outside on that, uh, I don't know if it was a cross buck or a trap, actually it was a trap block and just kind of pushed things out to open things up. So now uh, King's point in this situation, they're still at uh, first down, but now it's first and 18. So we'll see if they go to the air. They have three wideouts in the game at this point. First time we've seen a single setback. Clark over center, Beers is deep. And here they go to the right-hand side, the same play to the right-hand side, up over the 45 to about the 47-yard line. Matt Mercer right there to put the stop on, but that's a good six-yard pickup. And, and once again, they just continue to pound away at the tackles and inside. It's hard to see from this angle, Dave, as we take another look at it, but the linebackers of WPI are almost like they're running backs. They're about six to seven yards behind the line of scrimmage when they set up. Hard to meet the point of contact there with the runner and do anything to stop him. They're going to pick up five yards before they can get to him. Okay, the three wide receivers stay in the game. They're all slot, and two in the slot and the left. Beers, they're looking to him. Now they're going deep. There's the pump fake. A lot of room. Clark runs out of it, and he's got Fury taking it down the sidelines, and he's going to take it in for a touchdown. Beautiful pass. Clark kind of moved around. Kevin Fury with the play, and he just broke open into the slot. It was a beautiful pass. He hit him right in the right in the belly. Again, great time provided by the offensive line. Clark's able to roll to his right, to his throwing side, has all kinds of time, looks downfield and sees Fury break clear. That little hesitation right there is what allowed Fury to break away. Kept moving, takes the ball in stride, and the former ECAC Rookie of the Year just takes it in stride and carries it into the end zone. Also the player of the game in last year's ECAC championship, Kevin Fury, very versatile guy. Very versatile player, the kicker last year, Hunter. And of course, he is the favorite target of Brian Clark, as we've seen there. But the pass was also a tough pass by Clark as he throws it going across his body, John. Donald in for the extra point here. He's getting a lot of work today. And it's up yes. and through. Another one. That stretches out the score to 15, 16 to nothing. Kings Point has the lead with 8.43 left in the first quarter. Kings Point is on the march, and we're coming back. Let's go meet some winners. So now, how much did you win? Just under two million. Just under two million. Care to tell us how much win? 3.4 million. 1.8 million. Well, how much did you win, for example? 413,000. I've hit it twice uh, last year for 1,000 and once the year before for 1,000. How much have you won? 7.2 million. 7.2 million. That's a lot of millions. That's a couple of bucks here and there. Yeah, you're a modest man <laughs> about your enormous means. So what does it feel like to win that much money? It feels great. Television, communication, perception, information, discussion, consultation, comprehension, connection, dissemination, duplication, promotion, cultivation, realization, revelation, exclamation, Hesitation, hesitation. Television production by a creative video. Yeah. We talk about the ground game of King's Point. We have to talk about the passing game as well. He rolls wide and near story, breaking free. Again, carrying it right down the sideline. Good patience and great time from that offensive line, David. We'll get back to them when King's Point returns with the ball. Goes O'Connell sending this one deep. It's going to go to about the 10-yard line. Lohan has it at the 5, and he's coming right back up the middle with some room. He spins, and he's off at the 25, and he is over the 30. Fights his way. Probably took about five or six hits along the way. Peter Gunther finally made the tackle. First one who wrestled him down to the ground. But it's going to give WPI some pretty decent field position at about the 32-yard line. 28-yard return for Lohan, who really acted like he didn't want to go down, David. Now, what do you do in this situation, John? Do you go, do you open it up? You're down by 16 points already. Or do you just continue to stick with the game plan and hope for the best? I think if you're WPI, you have to stick. They've been doing razzle-dazzle. I don't think they've been playing conservatively to this point. They've really been trying some innovative things offensively. 
Well, he has the ball as he goes over about the 30, fights his way through maybe half the population of Worcester, Massachusetts on that one. They go over about the 35-yard line. Big crowd there. Let's see if we can recount some of the guys who were there. Hanson, Homan, and Steve Monson were at least three of the guys in on that play. But uh, he takes it up over for about a three-yard gain. And it uh, looks like they're going to try and stick with the game plan right off the bat. Might be a little bit too early to panic. This, again, is a team with a lot of weapons and can get back in the game. But uh, the other thing that we've seen is Kings Point is, has not shown uh, a, a willingness to give up a lot of long drives. No, man, they, they get the ball back for the offense. If they don't score themselves, they're only too happy to turn it over. Nobody in the backfield. Everybody, Willie now shifts as well as Leahy. Kevin Duffy moves from the right side to the left. And here's the fake pitcher looking to pass, looking for Duffy over the middle. Just misses him, and Duffy had broken free. Probably needed to take one extra count, John, and Duffy was what would have had a lot of running room. Looks like Duffy came up a little short on that reach, too. I don't know if he caught his foot in the turf. Take another look here. Good time, something that he has not had thus far. Able to set that little ball fake right there, close the defense for a second. There's a hole by Leahy. Has a time. Just caught on a misstep, maybe on his wrong foot before he could lunge. But he had a step on Ty Backman, the inside linebacker, who had the tough job of covering the tight end coming out of the out of the pack. And room to run had he made the catch. Duffy comes out of the ball game. Duffy from uh, Concord, New Hampshire. A couple of New Hampshire guys on the WPI roster. Burns back. He's looking in the flat. And it's tipped by Hanson on the play home and check that free safety kind of wandered out there and John if he got his hands on that he had a lot of room to roam. Lohan was the intended receiver I think the uh, WPI coaching staff may have enjoyed what they saw in that kick return take another look here as we see Burns again taking advantage of the time that's given him by his offensive line makes the throw over the top but Hanson wisely steps up almost able to pick it off here at the top of his jump tips it away and falls incomplete and that's three downs and out Stan Farrell on to punt it away for WPI gets an end over end kick there's Simpson looking for the ball he's going to let it bounce around goes over the 30 and is going to trickle down around the 26 yard line that's where the official will mark it good coverage on the part of the engineers the wise play in this case by the return team to let the ball roll out of bounds rather than trying to pick up a, a bouncing ball here on this omni turf surface uh, as you might expect David here at a, a highly technical institution they have a highly technical playing surface it's called omni turf I wonder if they made it in the lab <laughs> <laughs> Probably know how to. Yeah. Probably anyway, a master's thesis. This is getting repetitive. 7-15 still to go in the first quarter. Kings Point with a big lead at 16 to nothing. And they bring it out again. Beers, the lone wide, the lone running back in the backfield. And they're just going to come back with the counter. Beers right over center. He's got running room. And he takes it up to about the 29-yard line. Nice job. Mercer in on the play. Renucci in on the play. He made the first hit. Came up from deep safety spot. Nice play by Mike Renucci. Kevin Renucci, sorry. From Warwick, Connecticut. Once again, take another look here. The uh, defensive secondary from WPI is really being called forward here. Beers with the cut and a great time able to read his block falls right off the block by Kev Keith Urgel and just pushes right up and it's Renucci who takes another hard hit takes a toll on those little DBs as the game wears on okay it's second and seven looking at Beers now they're going on the left hand side they got they're looking for Fury deep and he has got him what a pass in and out of his hands it was right there 83 Peter Barb on the play he was right there what a pretty pass it kind of makes you wonder why Burns doesn't throw the ball more. <laughs> Burns lying on the ground, perhaps in disbelief, but he he takes a heavy hit after this pass is thrown, looks downfield, and he threads the needle, puts it right on the money. Double coverage for the engineers. Chris Moore is also in on the play, but it wasn't the defense here. That ball just slipped right through Fury's hands, unable to make the catch. Meanwhile, back at the other end of the field, the Kings Point trainers are out. And he was, uh, Burns was fully extended. The rush came from the right-hand side of the uh, WPI side. I think it was um, I think it was Matt Burrows who came in from that side, but they are while the, the officials or while the trainers are working on Mike Bur Brian Clark. Check that. Let's take a break. Quality time was made possible by GMAC. With financing and leasing that can be arranged for your new GM vehicle fast. 
right at the dealership. Because GMAC believes you should be out enjoying your new car instead of waiting for it to be financed. GMAC, the expressway home. Welcome back to Worcester, Massachusetts. Let's take a look at this play. We'll take an end zone shot of the play that Brian Clark got hurt on. And as you can see, he comes fully extended right after the release. Matt Burrows drilled him in the ribs, and uh, that's a bad sign, especially since he's still down. There goes the pass out, and it is a beautiful pass right on the money to Peter Barb. And straight through his hands. Coverage on the part of Matt Wassel and Chris Moore were out there, but they were beaten, John. He will not be happy when the films are shown when the Kings Point team gets back to New York. Always a uh, sinking feeling, <laughs> sitting in something like that. But perhaps a sinking feeling on the Mariners' sideline right now that trainers are still trying to tend to Brian Clark, who's still down on the field. He just rolled over. Well, that's a good sign. Uh, any movement at this point is a good sign because on a play like that, David, again, you're really throwing the ball downfield. You open up, uh, instead of a nice, tight, you know, short arm throw, he really threw with his whole body. And almost brought his momentum into the rushing defender. Burrows with a big hit that really rocked him. And Charlie Pravada, as you can see on the sidelines, is a little bit upset, thinking perhaps it may have been a late hit. I think he's looking for a flag. There was, there were no flags on the play, we should add. And Brian Clark is now walking off under his own power. That's a nice, a nice sign. And I know Tom Burns is glad that I made a mistake and called Brian Clark Tom Burns. It wasn't Burns who got that hit because that was a delivered blow from the defensive end, Matt Barrows, is a defensive tackle. Charlie Pravada will go to the bench now, David. Pardon me, John Dines will come in at quarterback. He's a sophomore, uh, stands 5'10", goes 175. He's from Longmont, Colorado. And there were three receivers in the ball game, wideouts in the ball game again. It's a split end, and the tight end is split out into the slot. And two runners in the back. And they go back to two beers who just tripped up in the end zone. And uh, I mean, uh, tripped up in the backfield. He takes it to about the 28 yard line, about a loss of two yards. And that was the first time we've seen them not get a game on the down. First just, time they've been stopped. Just lost his, lost his footing on the play. Uh, really pretty simple. Can't give much credit to the WPI defense here as we look again. A stumble by Dines, and then we have Beers lose his footing for the first time tonight. Okay, Fury in the game to punt it away. And he is, gets it up into the air. Lohan catches it on one knee, kind of lost his balance. Lohan, the wide receiver, right on the 30-yard line, pretty decent field position for WPI. He did not want to make a fair catch there, but he was looking for the return. He had Swedek right there to help him out with the immediate coverage from King's Point. He wanted to carry it upfield, but lost his footing. That's three trips on two plays. Maybe the turf is showing the effects of the evening humidity here in Worcester, Massachusetts. Okay, Worcester has got to get something going. Quarterback Tom Burns comes into the ball game. He brings in the play. Trailing a little under, we're under six minutes to go in the first quarter. This could be the longest sport for first quarter in the history of football. But 16-0, uh, Kings Point has it. Burns in the ball game. We go. It's Wooly in the deep back. They're going to go to Wooly. They're going to fake it to Wooly. Burns rolls out with some room. And he just drops it to Padula, who threw it behind him. Padula looked like he had a little bit of running room. But uh, would have had to shake off the linebacker coming in. But it goes incomplete. We're going to have a second and ten. Perhaps Padula had some running room, but as you take another look on this play, he's the only guy in the WPI offense who had any room to move. Burns is under heavy pressure here. Ken Curris not going for the fake, shakes it right off and goes in hot pursuit. He just dumps it short and behind Padula, who actually is not a bad receiver, caught 13 passes last year. I like a defensive end. He's got number 47. I like that. <laughs> Okay, Burns, power eye, wide outs in the slot. Lohan, they give it to Woolley, he's got some room, and he runs up over the 35, takes it up to about, over the 30, takes it to about the 34 for a four-yard pickup, almost a five-yard pickup. And that's a good call by the WPI coaching staff. Burns, with the drop, gets it Woolley. It's actually a draw play, a, a delayed draw, and when you have a really aggressive defense, as Kings Point does, you have to try and take advantage of that aggressiveness, David, and use it against them. Perhaps uh, can be likened to jujitsu. jitsu if anything, uh, good call. They're going to take three wideouts. Duffy's out of the game at tight end. Johnson and Swedek in the right-hand side. Swedek in the slot. Lohan on the left-hand side. And we got the roll. Woolley leading the roll. And the pass goes down to the sidelines. And Swedek, he's got it and steps out of bounds. First down for WPI. 
There's that safety pass where they tried to pull off earlier when they were going for the first down. In this case, you get Swedek run there, take another look at uh, Dave Swedek running that wide out. Again, taking advantage of Burns' mobility. This is something they did so much in the past years with Dave Cepelletti. Let him roll and pick his receivers. Swedek, with that safety route, able to make the catch and just step out of bounds. Not much chance of an interception that, that if the ball is well me like they're, Excuse me, John. It seems to me like they're rolling a little bit more than they have in the past, and that might be to kind of help relieve some of the pressure from the offensive line. Two wide outs are going to Woolley right up the middle. He's got a lot of room over the 45, and he's going to go into Mariner territory as he falls over the 50 and picks up about seven yards on the play. Take another look at this play here. WPI offense must be getting giddy. This is the, probably the fourth consecutive play they've run for the first time tonight. Good penetration by Willie. He gets that running room he needs. He doesn't need much. He needs a couple of steps to break free. And in this case, he's able to do it and, and put the ball across. Oh, just short of midfield. And we have a second and four situation. Power eyes. Swedick left. Johnson right to go to Padula. And he does not have very much one running room. He may have fallen over the 50 somewhere in that vicinity. Don't think he got a yard, maybe half a yard. I'd like to see them make a little more use of Padula. Take another look here. Uh, Willie is drawing most of the attention from the defense as he has in all of the WPI games thus far this season. Padula has been good in short yardage situations. In this case, just offensive line is overwhelmed by the pursuit. There you see Padula wrapped up well before he gets to the line of scrimmage. Steve Brody, Ken Chorus, among others. And there. Sell as well. Here comes the roll across his body. Burns is looking. And we have a completed pass to Swedek, who really caught one right in the middle of the crowd at about the 45-yard line, and he's going to get a first down. Official right there with the spot, able to uh, get there. Swedek with a hook slide catch. Covered the ball with his body. Again, we see the rollout, something they have to do to protect Burns. He's able to roll and cross his body again, but hits Swedek with a low pass. Again, safety position. Swedek with a nice hook slide makes the catch. Good spot gives WPI a first down. Nose tackle Steve Brody. Good job on the play and the pursuit inside. And there's five flags on one play as uh, both sides jumped off. I think it was, I think it's going to be a WPI as it was pulled off by Kings Point, but they got back. And that's who they're talking to. So WPI looks like they're going to go back into a hole. First and 15. My surmise is correct. They have had a tendency to hurt themselves already tonight. This is probably the fourth penalty they've been assessed so far today. Each one seems to come at that time. Watch the top of your screen. I think it comes from that end. A little bit of a hesitation here on the long count. Duffy re yeah, reacting to the move by the defender. Kevin Duffy jumps Duffy offside. Duffy drawn offside and a nice move by the Mariners defensive line. Yeah, I never Hot. understood that rule. That rule. Why are the defensive players allowed to move over the line of scrimmage to pull people off? The defensive players are supposed to react. Okay, we're right at midfield, first and 15, a little under three minutes to go in the first quarter. Worcester needs to get something going, and they're just throwing it out over, and it is nearly intercepted by Rodney Keynes, who looked like he was the wide receiver on the play. Johnson just pulled up in the pattern, and it was one of those lofted out there, and hopefully Johnson could outrun it. I'm not sure exactly how the signals got crossed here. This is a timing play, obviously, David. Burns is just going to roll it out there and loft it up and let Johnson run under it. Johnson pulls up short, however. The only person with any chance of catching the ball is Keynes. I think he kind of was shocked he was so all alone. Just let it slide through his hands. Good speed on Kane, though. You know that name, you just know he's fast, you know? For some running, reason. Running it down like a center fielder. You know, nice, nice coverage. He really kind of stuffed Johnson. Pulled the play up. Second and 15. Now in the shotgun. Burns with his first great job. And that's Curris. They throw the screen inside, and he gets belted by Curris and had to get rid of it. And there's a penalty flag. And it may be. I'm not sure what it might be. I don't think it's a late hit. He might have been a little bit of uh, inter <laughs> extracurricular activities after the play was over, David. In this case, Burns gets the ball, and I think Ken Curris almost beat him <laughs> before he got the ball. Curris in direct pursuit, doesn't hesitate at all. Nothing Burns can do. He really does a nice job just to get the pass away. Officials now tending to the penalty. And it looks like it might not be a penalty because they're not moving it from any place. Third and 15, maybe it was an inadvertent flag because the ball is going back to the line of scrimmage. Third and 15, and that was a nice job by Burns. Dangerous to get rid of it, but uh, he just, I'm not even sure if he saw Curris coming in. That is the most exposed in football, and you just 
you know, your back is to the defender. Three, four wideouts. Woolley in the slot. Burns looking pressure. He's on again, and he throws it to Swedek. He's got it over the 38-yard line, and he takes it up uh, about the 37. Swedek has been the player. He has so far in the game. He's not, he was one of the favorite targets last year. Seen limited playing three games so far this year. But uh, Burns does a nice job of getting rid of the ball. And with Doug Vogt breathing down his neck here, in this case, Burns took a heavy hit after the pass was completed, but Swedek takes it in the secondary with a little bit of room to maneuver. Not a lot. Keynes comes up to help make the tackle. Decision time yet again for the engineers with a fourth and about three. Kevin Morris looks like he's going to go for it. Dave Swedek, seven catches for 136 yards, nearly a 20-yard average. And he was a dangerous receiver. That's a limited play over three games. And we've seen already today, he's got four catches. He is the favorite target. Burns looking to pass, going over the middle, and he throws it to the inside of Johnson, who just can't come. Steve Johnson, with the dive, couldn't get his hands on it. And uh, they're going to turn it over on downs. But I think that's good play by Morris. Take another look here. Again, WPI is trying to take advantage, you know, keep the WPI, uh, the Kings Point offense off the field. In this case, Burns makes the nice throw on the money. A little bit of a downward spin on that nose. Don't know if the defender got a piece of it. But Johnson just unable to make the diving catch. This play by Alex Wheeler, though. He got right back into the zone coverage. And there we see, 16 to nothing. Kings Point wants to, under two minutes to go, wants to add to that score. And Dines still in a quarterback, gives to Beers. And Dines has seen limited action this year. John Dines, number three. He is uh, in uh, limited action, three completions, seven attempts. But uh, that's not exactly been the thing. If he can hand off and get, the, get it from the center and hand off, that really has been the bread and butter. Clark has thrown the ball two times, both beauties on the money. Of course, the second one, he uh, paid the price and is still out of the ball game. Well, the, first play, the first play, Dines is in the game, he stumbled, so he's actually getting a little bit smoother now, getting his game feet under him. Okay, that was a three-yard gain, second and seven, Fury in motion. Raganish and Beers, there was going to be Dines' first pass. Fury, uh, in his motion, Dave, actually broke up field a half step. I think he'll be called for it. After he started in motion, he reversed direction, headed back toward the sideline, took one misstep toward the WPI defense, and it is a procedure call. It will go against Fury, moving the Mariners back five yards. Somewhere Tom Landry is frowning <laughs> at the misstep on the motion plate. Of course, the Cowboys made for famous. So I'm not, I don't think they started. I think Paul Brown started. One thing about today's game, though, you get a lot of nice post-set formations, a lot of multiple formations, a lot of variety in offense. And a nice shot from the backfield. They're running, usually like to run it right over those guards right there. And that's how Drew Beers takes a look at it. They've got the two linebackers in the game. Once again, Fury in motion. And they're looking for Beers, and there he is. A lot of room right up the middle, over the 40, and runs into a pile of guys. Wassel was one of the people trying to slow down the track. Who Wynn was in the middle of it, as was Mercer. And he took it up over the 40-yard line to about the... Quick, he had a lot more room, takes it right up. And uh, they bring it back to the line of scrimmage from second down. Now it's third and seven. Originally started at second and seven. Move back on the illegal procedure play. Third and seven. Interesting to do what they'll do here. This is their first passing situation. With Dines in the game again. Okay, two, three wideouts all to the right, two in the slot. And uh, looking like they're going underneath the Fury, and it was a really kind of a slow play developing. Fury had nowhere to go with it, and they were going with a safe play there. Joe Laskowski on the play diagnosis. No, he's tackling. They love tackling guys on passing. Well, he's making the tackle before the ball arrives here. I'm wondering if it might have been the congestion in the middle of the line, maybe just confused officials, because he's being tackled before he makes the grab. I think they're having a little bit of discussion. It has to be a pass interference call. He was hit by number 90 from the WPI defense. No flags, Joe Laskowski, though. the nose guard, wrapped him up. Some discussion. Uh, no flags, but that's the end of the first quarter. That's what they're talking about. Kings Point leads it 16 to nothing over WPI as they march it upfield. Let's take a break. Let's go meet some winners. So now how much did you win? Just under two million. Just under two million. Care to tell us how much win? 3.4 million. 1.8 million. Well, how much did you win, for example? 413,000. I've hit it twice uh, last year for 1,000 and once the year before for 1,000. How much have you won? 7.2 million. 7.2 million. That's a lot of millions. 
That's a couple bucks here and there. Yeah, you're a modest man <laughs> about your enormous means. So what does it feel like to win that much money? It feels great. We are back, and while we were away, there actually was a penalty on the last play. It did not end the quarter, but uh, there was a penalty roughing the pass, and they marched it ahead on the play, not pass interference. And uh, that put Kings Point into WPI territory, and the ball goes sets now at about the 39-yard line, and they'll have a first and seven situation when they come back. First, uh, second and seven, check that. They march the ball back now. The quarter can't end, of course, on a defensive penalty, so they replay the down. Probably can't now, end on an offensive penalty either. <laughs> there you go. In this case, Kings Point takes advantage. They're waiting to reset the chains on the far side of the field. Probably a good time to talk about Charlie Pravada's philosophy, David. We mentioned that since he's come to Kings Point, it has been very much offensive in its orientation. He's been fortunate enough to bring in the players who can carry that philosophy. Not just running backs, however. It's the offensive line that really is the crux of this Kings Point offense. Four juniors and a sophomore. They only have 11 seniors on the team, so this is a real strong unit he has assembled with some experience yet to be gained. And they were dominating a year ago, and they're dominating so far today. Second and seven, Fury in motion. They're going to go back to Beers right up the middle. First hit, slips the first hit, and he takes it up for another four or five yards. Wassel makes the tackle as he comes across the 35-yard line, and it was Mark Alexander on the original hit. Take another look here. Full win with good penetration as well. Beers hits the line of scrimmage, and it's, it's win right there. Wraps him up and allows him to slip free. You can't let Beers get a second chance. He's just too explosive. Nice hit and good contact. Good work by both players in the defensive secondary. And I'll tell you, that was strong hands. Matt Wassel hangs on hard after win. He let Beers slip out of his hands. Actually, it was Alexander got put on his back by a great block and just kind of went right over the top. Third and one, Beers back, got the first down, and marches ahead past the 30-yard line into about the 20. 7-26 yard line and uh, Kings Point continues their relentless march. Wassel and Moore on the hit. We spoke earlier about the fact that the defensive backs from the engineers are doing a lot of the defensive work. Another look here. Beers is able to slice right through that first wall of the WPI defense and he's into the secondary and again we see Wassel and Moore with the hit to bring him down. And Kings Point has not missed a beat so far with the John Dines in the game. They had one one mistake and they got a break on a penalty, picked up a first down. They've continued to move along. There's a timeout on the field as uh, John Dines goes to the sideline to talk it over with Charlie Pravada. And always a good move for a quarterback who's in, coming into the game cold. Be sure about what you're going to run. They're in scoring territory. They're not in the red zone yet, but they're definitely in position to punch it in again. John Dines is uh, back in the ball game with the guys, getting ready. And uh, my guess, you think they're going to change their philosophy, son? Did Charlie Provada <laughs> change much during that little meeting, or no? No, I think it was just a little hello, how you doing? Everything working out okay on the field? Dines probably checking to make sure he has all the proper personnel. Really haven't seen things that we didn't expect during the game. Kings Point has continued to. Uh, has continued to pound away and they've done a good job. Their defense has been pretty relentless as well. And here we go, first and ten. Dimes over center, power eye. They're going to go with the reverse. And it's Barb who's got the ball. He cuts inside, inside the 25, up to about the 21-yard line. And he's going to come up short of the first down, probably about an eight-yard gain. Ed Christie among others in that offensive line, the right guard just doing the job. And that one was a little bit of a deception as Barb came from the inside slot on the left side and took it around. I'd like to take another look at that play because really the uh, Mariners haven't engaged in a lot of subterfuge. They indicate the personal foul on the play. Take another look here as they try and fake going left and all of a sudden it's coming back to the right with Barb. Has a lot of holes to choose from. Fortunately, the WPI defense hadn't gone off that much in pursuit. Christie able to come back and make the hit with a little bit of help. Tom Doobie on the tackle as well, but this all goes for not. They had a clip on the play. Ball's going to come back to about the 36-yard line. Which will stretch it out to about a first and 18. A little bit of adversity. Not a passing situation with the way things have been going. But it almost seems a situation like this gives Kings Point even more options. 
first base. I'm going to go with two guys in the slot. Now Fury comes back to the left-hand side in motion. Turns the other way. And they're going to Beers on the counter. No, they're not. Stein is looking for the ball, and he's got it to Fury to look to run before he had it. And it just drops at his feet. Wasn't exactly a picture-perfect pass, but uh, catchable nonetheless. That's, yeah, that's a tough one for the receiver, especially Fury, who's shown he has exceptional hands. Again, a little subterfuge here with the play fake, able to freeze the linebackers for a second there. In fact, the good fake, they chase after Beers, leaves Dines all alone. He's able to make the throw, but really a tough catch for a receiver. Fury was thinking run before the catch, but tough to take it off the shoe tops. And Doobie was uh, in pursuit of Dines. Okay, third and 18, a little bit of <laughs> chicanery there. Three more flags go up, and then we're gonna see illegal procedure in the left-hand side of the line some problems and Fury pats himself on the helmet indicating he wasn't too happy with what he did. Second time Kevin Fury's been caught in an illegal procedure. And uh, now we're going to have a third and 23 situation. Second and 20. Scoreboard's got second and 23. Field markers have third and 23. It is third down. A long way to go. Leahy's now in the ball game. He's going to be in the left-hand slot, the big tailback. Passing down, Dave? Looks like a passing down. Certainly looks like a passing formation. Fury in the left. Stein looking right. And he is going deep, and he overshoots. Beautiful play by Kevin Ranucci, who just kind of got his hand in there at the last minute. And uh, the pass was right on the money. Intended for number 82, Wendell Porter. Looked a little bit sluggish getting down there. Renucci with a good reach, able to make the play. Porter probably would have had to leave his feet to make that catch. And now, WPI will get the ball back on downs. Another look here. Dines looking downfield, tries to float it. I think he probably threw it a little more of a direct line than he'd hoped. Got it just a little bit too far out again. Renucci with a real nice coverage. Okay, Fury back to kick it. Low line. Lock. It is all the way to the 30-yard line, and it's recovered. Down underneath. Matt Mercer with the penetration, able to break through the King's Point offensive wall. Knocks the punt down, makes the block. WPI with a big recovery, and we'll be back with the engineer's possession after this. The United States Merchant Marine Academy provides the American Merchant Marine, U.S. Armed Forces, and the American transportation industry with career professionals known for superior discipline, integrity, and strict adherence to the Academy's motto, Acta Non Verba, Deeds, Not Words. Situated on Long Island Sound at Kings Point, New York, the Academy is just 30 minutes from New York City. It features the most advanced maritime training centers in the world, in addition to extensive laboratories and waterfront facilities. The four-year program is a well-rounded curriculum with solid professional courses. The midshipmen spend one year at sea visiting the four corners of the world, augmenting their practical education, receiving at graduation a Bachelor of Science degree and a commission in the Naval Reserve. The Academy is renowned for a rich tradition of service to the nation. In peacetime, its graduates serve the nation's commerce, while in time of national emergency, King's Pointers serve as the fourth arm of defense. The U.S. Merchant Marine Academy of Kings Point, New York, the world's foremost maritime educational institution. Fury ready for the kick, David, and he takes a little bit longer than he might otherwise, and there's Mercer coming straight through, knocks the ball away in great pursuit. Chris Ward made the recovery, and there's the pass to Duffy inside the 25 on the rollout. And uh, WPI has something going. That was the break they needed, John. Still 12.30 left in the second period, but they got to get on the boards. Chris Moore made the recovery at about the 25-yard line or so. 20, now check that, about the 30-yard line. And that gives uh, the completion to Duffy, gives him a first down at the 22. Looking to see a little bit of momentum here for the engineers. They're trying to take advantage, pushing the ball upfield trying to get on the scoreboard. You saw Brian Clark warming up. Looked like he was in pretty decent shape warming up on the sideline. May see him back in the ball game. Now they're going to Woolley, who's got some room on the outside, but he has tackled beautifully from behind. Horace kind of penetrated from the nose guard and just ran Woolley down from behind. It did look like Jason Woolley had room. Again, his quickness is able to come through. Right here, Curtis just shoots right through there, fights off the block, and just strings it out. Two defenders there, ready to meet Woolley as he tries to go wide to the right side. Great pursuit from the left-hand side, actually the right-hand side of the Kings Point line, John. 
Drops Woolley for about a three-yard loss, second and 13. Here's another look at Ken Curris. Johnson right, Sweetie to the left. There's Ken Curris. We go to the power eye, fake to Woolley. Looking deep to Sweetick, but he bounces it. I'm not sure if it was going to Duffy or in the short pass, it was going to Sweetick on the long pass. Had Sweetick open deep. Just, as you said, David, kind of a tweener. I'm not sure if it was indecision on Burns' part as to where he wanted to throw the ball, because he did have the time. He had Curris coming from his blind side. Fortunately, he wasn't aware of it. Yet when he makes the pass, it just falls right in between both both players. Brian Simpson on the coverage on the deep. Nice job on the offensive line by WPI. He had all kinds of time to get that ball off. Now it's third and 13. And they're getting close to getting into the zone. They're going to go with one running back, Leahy, in the ball game. Number 35. He's going to be the deep back, Willie, in the slot. And they're going to slip it to Willie underneath. He's open, and they've got it to him at the 20. He's got some room. He's going inside the 10, and he is knocked out of bounds on about the four-yard line. And we have a penalty flag. Might have been a late hit. And it was uh, Rodney Kane on the play, and Keith Hickerson, the fifth back, the nickel back in there, also down there, knocked him out of bounds. Another look here, and again, Burns with the drop, doesn't realize how much pressure he has coming from behind in Curris. He waits just till the last instant, is able to hit Woolley on the crossing pattern. Woolley running against the grain, able to turn it upfield. Looks like he has room, thinking he might take it all the way, but he's bumped out of bounds. And here, after he's out, we get the late hit by Kane. Personal foul, the penalty will give the engineers a first down. Looks like about the two-yard line, Dave. I'll tell you something, Hickerson really closed a lot of ground there. Looks like Woolley had the goal line in the game for the first time. They go to Padula, who has hit a brick wall in the middle of the field. And uh, it's kind of tough to tell who was there. Curris is there. Who else do we have? Number 59, Alex Wheeler, the inside linebacker, is there as well, as well as a host of others. But they went with the full backfield. Willie John, as you mentioned, he's the fourth leading scorer in New England. I mean, Russia, fifth leading scorer all time in New England Division Three, And he wasn't even the leading scorer for the team last year. Padula had the most touchdowns at 413 or 14 for the year. And he's the short yardage guy. He only to... picked up 360 yards, David, on the ground. And 13 of those yards were good for touchdowns, all one yard plunges. It's like refrigerator Perry. <laughs> Not quite. A little bit more nimble. Sweetick in motion. Is he going wide left? And they go to Woolley trying to get in somewhere. And he's stuffed by Monson right there in the backfield. He's going to go to the four. See Brody. Check that. He penetrated, stepped inside from the inside linebacker spot, and just stood Woolley right up. Brody comes through here. And again, a little bit of subterfuge up close. But they're not fooling anybody. Here comes that aggressive defensive pursuit. They even have the defensive backs up there up close to the line. Sam Hansen makes an initial hit along with Brody, and they're able to drive him back to about the four-yard line. Really loses two or three on the play, and now they've got a third down, David. Got to see a rollout coming here. Kings Point showing why they're the top-rated defense in the Freedom Football Conference. They stand 2-0 in the league. WPI 1-0 in the league. From the state, the leader right now, 3-0 in the league. Here we go with a, to uh, answer. He's got some room, and he's going to take it in. Nice misdirection. Most of the Kings point team bit on the fake up the middle of the Badula. And we just got the cross buck to answer. He took it out, used his speed, and took it into the corner of the end zone. Big touchdown for WPI. We haven't seen much of Ernie Anthony yet today, but here's a good opportunity for him. And right here, he gets a great block from Matt Leahy. Leahy's able to cut down the first pursuer, and Anthony's able to turn it into the end zone. The engineers are on the board. Sansa's first touchdown of the year. He really also has not been a ben beneficiary of the, you know, the juggling on the offensive line and the getting new used to it. He had a big year as a rookie last year in a backup role, or at least in a uh, he didn't have the featured role, which went to Woolley. It's their fourth touchdown on the ground this year for WPI. And they're going to go for two. They need to go for two, thanks to the safety, which just about opened the ball game. And they're going to go for the rollout, looking for Sweetick, but nowhere to go. He's going to pass it. There's Sweetick. Now check that. Johnson has it in the back corner. Nice job by Burns, who really kind of was patient, waited for the whole thing to develop, and he just dropped it over the front end of the line on the back line. Nice catch by Johnson. I think Burns changed his line three times on that play, David. He was thinking pass from the get-go. Didn't see much there. Started looking for the run, and as soon as he tucked it under, it changed the pursuit by the Kings Point defense. They started coming to him. He was able to spot Sweetick and Carter Johnson in traffic. Floated through for the two-point conversion. Cut the, the Mariners lead in half. Okay, there you have it. 16-8. to eight. We're Back within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. So let's take a break. 
You can enjoy the race, because if you're riding with Grapponi Ford, you've already won. You see, at John Grapponi Ford, we make sure you come in under the checkered flag every time. And we're honored to support your sport, New Hampshire. Hi, I'm Chris Amon. Look for me at New Hampshire National Speedway in the Grapponi Ford NASCAR Modified number 74. The leader in racing is Ford, and the leader in Ford is Grapponi Ford at the Grapponi Auto Junction in Concord. Welcome back to Alumni Field. WPI has cut the Kings Point lead in half on their second conversion, two-point conversion this season. They're two for two in that department, and they're going to have to be three for three if they want to get back in the ball game in the next one. But uh, they are going to kick off. Who do we have back deep for Kings Point? Brian Simpson. He's the punt returner. He's the kickoff returner. Plays on the corner. Plays a tough run job in the corner. And a uh, versatile guy. I'd like to see WPI stay with that wide open offense, David, and keep pushing the ball off field. Farrell moves into it, drives it to the 10. Simpson's going right back up the middle, and he runs into a crowd. Mercer there, number 58, doubles in on the... Actually, that's my favorite. He doubles on the kick return team. <laughs> middle linebacker. Don't usually see that very often, but there he is. It's just one of those guys who likes to lay a body on people, and he is their leading tackler. Pick up a couple of more that way. Well, there's no shame in Brian Simpson either. He gets the ball, and he just tucks his head down and goes right into the middle. He to see that on special teams Takes also. It up to the 33 yard line. Gives Kings Point pretty decent position. Brian Clark back in the ball game. That's nice to see. It's none the worse for the wear. And they go right back to Beers. Takes it up over the 35. Brings it up just shy or right onto the 40 yard line. Got a seven yard pickup on the play. Gives them a nice third, second and four situation. Six yard gain as it's marked just shy of the 40 yard line. Kings Point offense back on the field. Really uh, not customary of them, David. They've had a couple of possessions without punching the ball into the end zone. Maybe the return of Brian Clark might spark them. But once again, John, as you said earlier, they have not allowed a long drive. That one came off the block punt by Mercer, who also plays on that team. And they go back to Beers, and he just runs into a big pile. Penalty flag goes down in the middle of the field. And uh, who do we have? Matt Burrows in the middle of it. Defensive tackle who win in on the play as well. And we have got the preliminary signal as a hold from the inside of the line, and that's going to move. That's going to move. So the uh, Kings point back another 10 yards and outside, probably bring up a second and uh, check that, bring it up a second and 20, 25, probably a second and um, 12. Kind of an odd call, an eight-yard penalty. Second and 12 be a new penalty. Must have been a rule that slipped by an <laughs> eight-yard penalty for something. It's going to hold with 15 yards. Anyway, Burns back at uh, back at center. Beers and Raganese are the, the backs. Oh, throws up short. Um, Probably not a bad idea for him to throw that ball away. Mercer had dropped back nicely into a hook zone, was able to cover the short line on that pass. Had he thrown it deep, there were two defenders behind the receiver. Scott Volkart really pulled up on his uh, pulled up on his pattern as uh, he saw the defenders there. Maybe try to change it, but I think you're right, John. It's a good job, a good throw away. And that shows poise of the starter back in the ball game. Now it's third and 12, 8.30 left in the second period. Burns looking to pass again, looking for Volkart again. Right there in the middle, he makes a nice catch. He's over. If they're going to give him a catch, he's going to have the first down as he caught it right short of the 45-yard line. No, no. They had the instant replay. I'm not sure how this one would work. Nice look at it, but it's coming right back at you on the replay. Volkert with the route that will bring him right into the middle of the defense again. With the linebackers breaking to the outside, Volkert's all alone. Nice routes to clear it out for him. It looked, like, looked a, like a catch. Looked like a bounce to me. A little controversy here, but they're going to give him the catch. It looks like although the referees are still talking about it. They're, they're divided as we are. Look like a bounce to me. No, they're negotiating right here. Now let's see uh, which way we'll go. We're going to have a show of hands. How many think he caught it? Anyway, if it's a catch, it's going to be a first down. And uh, the talk continues. But what a job by the offensive line there by Kings Point. Uh, Burns said all the time in the world, he just stood up the defensive line. They are going to give him the first down. Referee always wins that fight. Holding call against the engineers is declined as well. 
So we do have the first down for the Mariners with 8.20 left in the second quarter. They were able to keep the drive alive with a first down at their own 44-yard line. Keith Eagle comes into the ball game at tight end on the one side. Two tight end lineup, Joe Kemp the other. They go with the power team right back to Beers, who just bounces over the 45, over the 50, takes it down about the 47-yard line, and that hole in the middle right over Robert Laws continues to be there. Again, great penetration. Laws is able to push away. Laws and Kapek working on that side. Beers has all the room he needs. Mercer kind of takes himself out of the play in the pursuit. The hit from WPI is just not enough to stop that pursuit. Mark Alexander with a big shoulder able to slow him down, but not before he picks up seven yards. And really, he got pushed back into that play on that. And there goes Beers again. He's got all kinds of room. He's over the 45. Legs knocked out from under him by Wassel, who came up from the deep safety. But nonetheless, it's another first down. And Kings Point continues to march along. 7.26 left in the second period. And uh, they just continue to bang away. They're trying to get their eight points back, John. And you watch a guy like Drew Beers break into that secondary, David. You watch how elusive he is, the moves he has. And you have to remind yourself that this guy was playing fullback last year. Here he goes and he breaks right past him. Quick acceleration, hits the hole and knows where he's going with the ball. As he's making that cut, it took Wassel to stop him from a much bigger game. Pierce had 60 yards in the first quarter on 11 carries. That projects to 44 carries for the ball game. And there they go again. He's over the 40, uh, 35. Takes up to about the 33-yard line. Mercer and Alexander right on the bottom of that pile as well. But that's going to be another five-yard gain for Beers. And it's going to go. Scoreboard's got second and six. I would beg to differ. Looks like second and five to me. Another look here. Here's Beers going behind that left side again. Kapek with a nice block crushing the defensive end. Allows him to pick up the five. I think the one, hold, one drawback for Beers, David, in terms of that 44 carry game is he's simply not playing in the fourth quarter. And Dan Joseph took a big hit by the offensive line to kind of take out the defender or take out the blockers to allow somebody else to make the tackle coming up from the strong safety spot. Very tight power tee here. Burns is going to look. He's got Fury going deep. He throws it out there. Fury is open and there is a penalty flag on the play. Kevin Renucci held up Fury who had him beat by a step. Pass was coming up short though. It looked like it might be okay. coming up short. Renucci didn't know. I don't think Renucci knew it however. We'll have to take another look at this one. Uh, Fury running a beautiful route and again Clark is able to wait, wait, wait. Give him the time to clear. Pass interference is the indication by the official on say, Kevin Renucci. Here's another look here. I was going to say if that was and pass interference, he would have been the biggest up since Dewey lost to Truman. And look at him wait and just float it up there and allow Fury to run under it. Renucci knows he's beat on the play. Really not much he can do. Grab the arm even when the ball was in route. I think at that point, after he committed the foul, he knew the ball was going to fall short. It was too late. He made the attempt to get it, but Kevin Fury take a look there at Kevin. Brian Ape. Clark likes that pass route. That's the third time they've done something like that. He likes to float it out there with good results every time. First and ten from the 18-yard line. And uh, they've Surprise, surprise. Beers is in the back. The deep man. Raganis is there. They go up the right tackle. And not a lot there. Mercer there on the tackle. Who win in on the tackle as well. And they, that time, uh, Worcester did a nice job of stuffing it. We'll take another look here. Look at the defense reacting. Beers, one of the few times today, he's not able to gain any penetration. Goes to the right side for a change. Not having the same success he's had on the left. Three and four or five tacklers there waiting to put the hit on him including number 15, Don Joseph, WPI. Interesting blocking schemes. Keith Irvin went from the right end and went in and wound up in the middle of the field. He kind of pulled and went left. Second and 10. Volkart and Fury to the left. Volkart in the slot. Now they're going to go on the right-hand side. The ball is in and out of the hands of Wendell Porter. And they kind of fooled everybody. Looked like it was going left. They rolled left. They stopped and fired it back to the other side. And he hit it right on the numbers. No catch in that play. The official rules with a big hit. Wassel right on the spot again. I wonder, David, if that might be a setup play now. If they might run a route where the low receiver goes and runs that same turn in to see if the defenders come up, maybe have him turn in and then break out a little hesitation move. Uh, great pursuit by WPI on that one. I wonder if Kings Point might be able to use that to advantage, maybe break that one out for a longer run, fool the defenders in a little bit of over pursuit. Only weighing 155, doesn't seem to bother Kevin Renucci from delivering the blow. The blow. There we go. Beers is the single setback. Again, Beers tries to handle Alexander, but he 
just takes him and throws him out of the way. Nice job by the big guy. Number 98 came in from the left-hand side. Mark Alexander. Watch him just take beers and throw him out of the way. Dropping back here. Clark has plenty of time again for the moment, but they are running an under and an over route, David. And before he can get the ball away, the big hit from Wheeler. I'm talking Mark Alexander lifts him right off his feet. Brian Clark taking a beating today. And Michael Connell on, he was booming him during the, he was trying for a 35-yard line. He was booming him easy during a warm-up, and it's blocked again. And Joseph is down there on the play. It goes by him. Kings Point picks up the ball and makes kind of a nice little play. Looks like Dave Casper is coming like that, but I don't believe the WPI gave up possession of the ball, and I think it's going to come back the other way. They can just down the ball there. Not bad if he could get away with it, though. Matt Barrows with the block. Able to knock it away. Will give WPI good field position, although the officials are negotiating right now. Probably going to put it down on the one-yard line. It's got to be around the 10. Now about the 5, looks like. In a hole. Last time they were in a hole like this, though, they had a lot of problems with it. Just coming close to five minutes to go in the half. Kevin Morris <laughs> shouting encouragement to his troops. There's a bullet, though, that uh, WPI dropped or dodged. Again, they're playing in the shadow of their own goalpost. It was disastrous the last time it occurred. They hit for the safety when Burns had no room to maneuver. It got pinned back there. Only the second block field goal this year against Kings Point. Give the credit again to Matt Barrows. And they've got a pretty wide, uh, I looked them maybe to go to Woolley here, they really wide formation. There's Woolley in the middle. Nowhere to go. Padula knocked back. Woolley knocked back. When they get you inside your own 20, or if they get you inside their 20, the Kings Point defense is as tough as nails. And sell with the big play. Tried to stretch the field and see if they could get some room. And almost a mini run and shoot there. And there's Chorus trying jumping some, in from behind. They're trying trap blocking inside, David, but the defensive ends are just coming right through, catching the play from behind. Good pursuit by Chorus. And now they've got, this is almost the same situation with the first safety. And the penalty flag looks like Burns has got some room. And he throws it deep to Swedek, who was just face masked all the way down by Simpson, I believe. And that's going to be pass interference. Simpson just got beat on the play as Swedek got deep. And he really, Swedek has been the big guy so far. He's been the, the consistent threat on the part of WPI. Take another look here again, David. You talked about the same situation where the first safety had occurred as the official signals pass interference. Burns is rolling out here. He gets a nice block from Woolley, saves him from the last defender. Then that gives Woolley time to set up. There's a takedown block. He really throws in stride, gets it up in the air, and I think you see a little bit of face guarding here by the Kings Point defenders with the hand right in the face. Official on the spot at midfield makes the call. Little negotiation now. They're, perhaps they may be offsetting penalties or maybe they're just making the 15-yard call from the, from the line of scrimmage, a 15-yard penalty. And it was questionable if Swedek had a, had a uh, was going to be able to get Look the ball. Me. I know. I, I thought he might have had a chance to catch it. He was ahead but of the pack. Simpson Simpson didn't didn't know where the ball was because his back, he was beaten. He didn't know that the ball might come up short. Mm -hmm. Again, give Swedek credit for staying with his route even when Burns was under heavy fire in the backfield. And really, the only lone setback, there's a sight, there's a, a shot of the point of battle. And they go to Woolley, who's got some room on the left-hand side. Over the 20, takes it up to about the 23-yard line. Jason Woolley with a little bit of room. Steve Monson on the tackle. Another look at Woolley starting from his traditional spot, about 7 to 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Sees nothing where the hole is designed, tries to break it outside. He really isn't much there either. Good pursuit by the Kings Point defense in the person of Steve Monson, seems second like, and five. Seems like Willie just needs one more block three or four times, so I'm gonna close out that person. But uh, he has not been able to get it or shake free. That time though, he picked up five yards, five yards in the play. The wide outs are to the right, they're rolling right, Burns with some room. He looks downfield and he's got Swedek in and out of his hands. Sam Hansen trailed behind, but Swedek I think got a little bit spooked by the sideline trying to get his feet in. I think you're right, David. I mean, he is there. Burns passes there again, right on the money. He seems to be he finding his rhythm here in the game today. Let's the ball go in stride. Rolling to his right now. That's definitely his strength. Hits Swedek in the numbers. Swedek was clear of the defense, just unable to pull it in. I think he was trying to count his steps, Dave. I think you're right. 
trying to time the catch and make the catch in bounds. Instead, the ball slips out of his hands, and we have an injured engineer on the field. Ted Brown, the center, is down on the field. And uh, they usually when they're talking to you like that, it looks like uh, they count my fingers. How many do you have? Seven. <laughs> but uh, he's moving his legs, and it's hard to make a uh, determination from here, of course. But uh, I think that was the Sports Channel Sports Channel curse for Dave Swedek, as we said he was the consistent threat, and then he made the play. Okay, with Kings Point up by eight points, let's take a break, and we're coming back. The average Grand Prix lasts but a few hours, unless it's a Grand Prix started with a genuine Delco Freedom battery. Delco's rated tops for taking the pole position in starting power and excelling in reserve capacity helps keep your engine in the race for a longer, more reliable life. AC Delco. It's like buying time. Now through December 4th, get started with up to $14 cash back on Delco Freedom Batteries. We are back. Ted Brown just coming off the field under his own power. There's the story as we have it right now. Kings Point took a commanding 16 to nothing lead right off the bat. Almost they got a safety right off the bat and then came back with the score. Stretched it out to 16 nothing. WPI has scored and is trying to claw their way back into the ball game. Burns is back to pass. He throws it over the middle and he has Willie over the 40. He's to the 15. It's a race and he has knocked out of bounds. Hickerson once again did a nice job closing and shoved Willie out at about the 45 yard line. The All Nichols kinds of room. Take another look here, Dave. Big, big play for the engineers. Seems uh, Tom Burns is really finding his stride now. Able to set up and find Willie all alone on the crossing pattern. No one near him. Willie wisely turns it upfield. Doesn't even need a block. There's no one there until Heckerson is able to knock him out of bounds. Big, big game. Biggest play so far today for Jason Willie. And you know what Burns is doing? He's being very deceptive with which way he's going to turn, which way he's going to roll. And, to me, and it looks to me like he's confusing the defensive backs a little bit and buying himself a little bit more time. I think the play action is one option they have to take advantage of to buy him more time. The rollout is also good. I like him rolling to his right. Gets a lot more on the ball. Ball set at the 45. He's going to pass it again. And that uh -oh. one is up for grabs. And they are lucky as he got belted by number 45, Doug Vogt, on the blitz inside. Actually, the outside linebacker came in. And uh, right, take a look at it from the background. There's Ted Brown kind of trying to walk it off. And watch from the left-hand side of your screen, right-hand side of your screen, left-hand side of the King's Point line. And uh, that's a dangerous area to kind of throw one up there. Real good penetration, though, on the play by Doug Boat. Jason Woolley not able to get to the line of scrimmage quickly enough to contain him. Okay, Leahy and Woolley are the back. Leahy the up man. And Burns is looking to pass again. Here's the draw. Woolley with some room on the left-hand side. And he just takes it across the 35 down to the 30. And that's the first time Jason Woolley has had some running room, and he knew what to do with it. Mike Holman on the stop in the secondary. Again, a quick look. The nice fake here is able to give Woolley a step or two to get started on the fake draw. As you see him breaking the secondary, he's looking downfield. No blockers ahead of him. He's looking at defenders trying to do some juking to shake him free. Runs into Holman instead, but not before. A big, big pickup. He really starts deep in the backfield. I think one of the deepest I've ever seen an, an, an eye back yet. Tailback. And he him again. And he's over the 30 and uh, knocked out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. That time, Monson made a nice open field move to throw him off balance. Not a bad idea, though, to come right back with the same play. If it worked once, why not try it again? And, of course, the success with the passing game, John, is the thing that's opened that up as well. Mm -hmm. The defenders just aren't as quick to come to the line of scrimmage when they're floating those passes over their head. Time ticking down under four minutes, 3.30 to go in the, in the second quarter. Big possession for the engineers here, David. They need to control the ball, and they'd like to score again. Obviously, cut the lead again before the half establish themselves offensively. Same backfield, and Woolley is just hit in the backfield. I believe it's Curris who just penetrated from the nose tackle spot and just stood Woolley up behind the 30-yard line. 
They're going to mark it at about the, but uh, right at the 30-yard line. So it is back to the nearly the original line of scrimmage. They're going to call it third and nine. And a uh, very big play. They don't want to give up the ball. They don't want to give the ball back to the point right now, do they, John? No, again, it's a real important drive for them, David. So psychologically, as much as it is in terms of the score, they've had a nice, nice run here, moving the ball upfield. They'd like to punch it in for a score. Back to pass. Burns looking over the middle. He throws it into the corner to Johnson. It's going to go out of bounds. He had broken free, and uh, Brian Simpson had fallen down, took bit on the inside move, and then fell down. Tom Burns. Another look at this painful replay for the engineers. Nothing but time here. Again, Simpson on the coverage is trying to cross over, gets his feet cut, falls down, as you see there on the reversal. A nice fake by Burns, but thrown out of bounds. Johnson, no chance to pull it down. Fourth and nine and for WPI. Really, he really didn't even have to loft it as much because even before Simpson fell down, he was out of the play. But of course, he had uh, he had Ty Backman on the blitz, bearing down on him. He had to get rid of it. Time out on the field now as the engineers talk it over. Matt, Matt Leahy has been playing fullback for the last two possessions. Wonder if anything has happened to Tony Padula. Play he does time also plays a little bit of tailback. But with a timeout here in the field, we've got, uh, they say we have come under three minutes to go. Interesting decision yet again. Good time to use your timeout here. For the engineers, right, with 2.46 remaining. Uh, you wonder about field goal range, fourth and nine. Ball spotted on about the 31 yard line. Makes it about a 50 yard field goal. I mean, you might be able to go down there and kick one, John, but I think that might be out of the range of Steve Adamo. If Andrea will let me wear her boots, I might have a shot at it. <laughs> Our ace spotter, Andrea Solomito, sporting a new pair of boots from the Lou Groza collection, I think. <laughs> Working on... Okay, here comes the big play. Everybody's talked it over. The defense went all the way over and talked on the uh, on their side of the field. And, and uh, Tom Burns was down there talking to coaching staff. And here's the play. Three wideouts, one in the slot. Burns is back to pass. The pressure is on the middle. And he undershoots. Lowen. He had some room there, but he had to deliver it. And Lowen just couldn't catch up with it. We're going to turn it over. Good call again. Unsuccessful in execution, but certainly the philosophy was correct here. He's got crossing receivers, confusing the defense. Finds a seam here, just out of the reach. Mike Lohan. Of the diving Mike Lohan, unable to pull it in. Turn the ball over to Kings Point on down. Out of Queens, New York. It's the home territory of Kings Point, as a matter of fact. And we just got a report on uh, Tony Padula, who's getting his back cracked on the sideline. And Beers just kind of barrels ahead <laughs> over the 41-yard line. I've been waiting to say that for the whole game. Beers and barrels ahead. Oh, there we go. But nice job in the middle. Mark Alexander with a big hit. Hurry up offense. Down. Hurry up offense. Clark in the field. They're in the shotgun. They're looking to stop the clock to sideline pass. And who catches it? Fury catches it and steps out of bounds. Good execution. That's one thing Kings Point's done very well is they've executed throughout here in the first half. And uh, the clock is stopped with 2.14. And uh, they're going to move the clock up for a first down as well. I like this hurry up offense as well, David, because now you've got the WPI off. Defense has been sitting on the sidelines well during that long possession. They're a little bit cold. Clock comes right out and starts firing with the hurry up offense. Push the ball down the field. Use the sidelines. Use the clock. 2.14 remaining here in the first half. Peter Barb just checked into the game. Three wideouts. Fury, Barb. And Volkart, who is in motion, coming to the near side of the field, going back to pass, looking for Fury. Pressure's on. Burns breaks out. A Clark check that. And he goes down, and the clock will continue to tick away. He goes down at about the 42-yard line. Mercer in on the play. Matt Barrows in on the play as well. And a little bit of a breakdown. And it was Lasikowski who really forced him out of the pocket, and he jumped back in as Mercer came in to fill. In the shotgun, Clark looking for Fury. He throws it deep. That's going to be picked off, and it is. Kevin Ranucci on the bad pass. That, uh, that was just overthrown, John. 143 left in the first half, so WPI has got some time. I think the hurry-up turned to impatience in that case. He had plenty of time here as we take another look. Looking downfield, 
but airs it out, but just gets way too much on the ball. Renucci, the only man in a position to make the catch, falls down on the play. WPI regains possession with 143 left here in the first half. That's the third interception of the year for the Warwick, Connecticut native, sophomore. And he has them all, according to my stat sheet. And what do you do, John, with 143? They were going with their razzle-dazzle offense as well, David, and I think that was really helping them move the ball up the field, mixing up the, the, the pass and run, little play action stuff, a little bit of rollout. I'd like to see them keep going at it aggressively. And they have a real conservative formation with six wideouts. Well, and there they go. It goes to uh, Lohan, who's got it. He's got the first down. May go out of bounds. Either way, it's a first down. So it's going to stop the clock at 136. Nice. And that was a... Uh, a nice pattern. They had three people on the left-hand side. Lohan just cut underneath and went right to the sticks. Nice catch and spin. Kevin Morris has to like what he saw on that play. Lohan with the spin that got him the first down. Padula back in the ball game. He's a single setback there to block. They're looking for Swedick. There it is. He's got it to 38. He's got some room. And uh, he goes by Simpson and, uh, let's see, Hanson. No, check that. Simpson and, yes, Hanson on the tackle. Good set here. Nice, quick three, four-step drop by Burns as he looks downfield, waits, sweat it, clears the first defender, turns, and he has all kinds of room there, runs right at the defender, tries to break up field. 115, the clock running now. Nice cut pass, Hickerson. Once again, they go, and here's the draw to Padula, who stops in the backfield, but then breaks free, takes it up over the 30 to about the 27-yard line. Closing in a minute here in the first half. Hurry up offense, they've still got plenty of time. Really move the ball very quickly down the field. 54, as we see. Single setback. Swedek and Johnson on the right. Woolley and Lohan on the left. And they're looking for Lohan, and there he is, open. He's got it, and the defender is down. And he's going to sidestep and go in for a touchdown. Beautiful move pass. Brian Simpson, who slipped on the cut, and Lohan took it in. Clever piece of running. Big, big play for the engineers, David. 39 seconds left in the half. They're in a position, they have tied the punt. They're in a position to tie the score. Take a look here. Burns has plenty of time as he sidesteps that one defender, throws it. His arm is hit as he makes the pass, but Lohan does all the work again. Defender slipping. Turf is getting wet by the evening moisture here. He goes right into the end zone. Nice cut and run by Mike Lohan. And there is a penalty flag but. on the play. But. <laughs> the looted our vision, and that is going to move it back. That is a dagger to the, we'll see if it's a dagger to the heart. But WPI has moved, has moved, has moved back in, has moved into their rhythm. Excuse me, John. And they have, uh, are certainly moving the football very well. Oh, boy. Tough play for the engineers. Brian, Moore, Brian Morris talking it over with Tom Burns on the sidelines. They're going to take a timeout, so we'll take a timeout. Some people are naturally faster than others. In fact, everything they do is fast. Fast, 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 fast. Now, not everyone appreciates that. But if you're looking to get a new GM car or truck financed, fast is exactly what you want. Mac will take care of your financing. And the folks who arrange GMAC financing and leasing are faster than just about anyone else. GMAC, the expressway home. You forgot your sunglasses. And there you have the time. WPI has got to regroup after scoring a touchdown and having it called back, holding on the interior offensive line in the pass play. But they have moved the ball in 40 seconds. This is enough time to get it done. They're going to start at the 38. Same double wide out on each side formation. The blitz is on. They throw underneath. And it hits Woolley in the back of the head. Willie throws his arms up and says, what's he doing? Burn, Burns really had no time to uh, hesitate and wait for Woolley to clear. Take another look at this here. He has real heavy pursuit coming from his left. And rather than think about it, he just has to dump the ball into Woolley. Woolley hadn't cleared yet, wasn't looking for the ball. Bounced harmlessly off the shoulder pad. Three Pro seconds and a down lost on the probably play. Probably good for Woolley. It's going to be third and 15 that he didn't catch the ball because he was ready. Steve Monson was right there to deliver the blow. And he's got some time. Monson from behind. He throws it deep to no one. Once again, another defender has fallen down. Number eight, Mike Holman. And uh, I meant to say on the, on the touchdown that was called back, John, that's the third time Simpson slipped down. And that uh, must be something to do with the turf because that time he really had no one. He wasn't even biting on a fake. He just lost his balance on the pass. The Mariners, stopped. Mariners have had to weather a little bit of everything in recent weeks, David. Last week, 
in their game against St. John Fisher. They played under real heavy, heavy rain, wet field conditions. Now they're playing on turf, and Simpson's been having a little bit of trouble with his cleats. Okay, it's fourth and 15. This is the down, 29 seconds to go, as you can see. And here comes another timeout. And with the score, 29 seconds to go, Kings Point leads it by eight. Let's take a break. Let's go meet some winners. So now, how much did you win? Just under two million. Just under two million. Care to tell us how much win? Three point four million. One point eight million. Well, how much did you win, for example? Four hundred thirteen thousand. I've hit it twice uh, last year for a thousand, and once the year before for a thousand. How much have you won? Seven point two million. Seven point two million. That's a lot of millions. That's a couple of bucks here and there. Yeah, you're a modest man <laughs> about your enormous means. So what does it feel like to win that much money? It feels great. It's been a great deal of uh, anticipation here for this fourth and 15. Been a timeout, a lot of time to talk about it. Three guys on the left-hand side. WPI's got to pull a rabbit out of their hat. He's looking deep, actually over the middle. And it's a nice play by Lohan. Good catch going across his body at about the 18 and immediately sent down, put down by Rodney Keynes on the tackle. And that's going to move the chain, stop the clock. And there is a player for Kings Point down on the field. And he has gotten at least his bell rung, and he has rolled over. Not sure who the number is. But that's going to set up a first and 10. WPI shown some resiliency here, John, after getting the touchdown fall back and have to take it back all the way to the 40. One more look here. Burns again with the straight drop looking downfield. Lohan has become his favorite target lately. They have Woolley underneath to freeze people. The linebackers in tight finds Lohan all alone again, leaving his feet, making his catch. Dangerous That's for him, but it's not him who takes the heavy hit. In this case, it's a, one of the Mariner defenders who's down on the field. That was a great catch because not only was his whole momentum going inside of the field and reaching back to stretch out, as soon as he got his hands on it, Rodney Keynes delivered the blow. And there you see Ty Backman getting up, and uh, he's going to run off. It's a nice sign. He did not want to stay down on the field. Obviously, they wanted the officials to move the chains and get the clock going again with the first down. 20 seconds remaining. Ball on the 18-yard line. Now they have about at least three plays left. Here's the blitz, and Burns does a nice job. He throws it out of bounds to avoid the sack, and uh, Johnson had the shot. He was the only guy but it would have had to have been a perfect catch. So that's a heady play by the junior quarterback, Alex Tom Wheeler. Burns. Alex Wheeler with heavy pursuit, really driving him back, threw off the wrong foot. Lucky he had the arm strength to throw that ball out of bounds. And the temperature is dropping here at Alumni Field. It's uh, getting kind of brisk. Here's our friend Alex. Nice job, Sarasota, Florida. He must really love the cold weather up here. Here goes Burns, looking down in the end zone. Johnson is open, and he's got it for a touchdown! Between three defenders, what a pass by Tom Burns. He did play, David, six seconds left in the half. Burns has had some luck here. He's got some time. All that confusion with the razzle-dazzle offense has foiled King's point a little bit. Throws off the back foot, leaping into the air, has enough arm strength to get it into the end zone. Deep, deep in the back. Johnson's able to make the catch for the touchdown, 16-14. And Hickerson just missed half a finger. That is Johnson's third touchdown reception of the year. And once again, he did it. Just broke free right at the last second in between three guys. And Burns just teased it up there. 19-yard touchdown pass, but he was about 10 yards deep, and Johnson was deep in the end zone. Put it in the air, 40 yards off his back foot. Yeah, they're going to, engineers are going for two. They are three for three this year in two-point conversion, and they look to Woolley, who's hit, and he is taken down. Simpson right there tried to throw underneath, and they didn't get it. Really can't can't do much to dampen the enthusiasm here of the engineers, however. They've come within two, David. One more look here at the touchdown pass. Burns with a straight drop. Doesn't have much time. He's got the heavy pressure off the back foot. Floats it up into the end zone. And watch Johnson just run into the picture. Oh, again, Hendrickson just unable to get a fingertip on it. Johnson with the big catch. The engineers are back in the game. It's 16-14. Seven plays, 68 yards. Or it took them seven plays to go 68 yards in a minute 37. That's what I call a big-time drive 
under pressure, scored twice, and really show what they're made of. And all of a sudden, WPI found its rhythm, John, with about eight minutes to go in the second quarter, and they really have taken the initiative. We talked about it last week after three tough losses, David. Last week, they found their offensive stride against Norwich. They were able to get things going, keep the offense on the field, maybe get a little bit of the synchronization they've been lacking. Today, it showed, too, they had a real rocky start. They were down 16 zip. Now they've climbed right back into the game, largely through their offense, 16 to 14. And it uh, it really started with the passing game as they decided to get away from the running game. That opened up a few. Once they got passing, opened up a couple of uh, areas for Woolley also to pick up some of his two biggest gains. And we should point out also that again, this offensive outburst is coming against the toughest defense in the Freedom Football and Conference. Farrell moves into it and squibs it going to go out of bounds. No, it's not. It's going to hang in there. What? would be a great bunt. Simpson has got it. Picked it up at the five-yard line. He's got some room. Banged around. Ansa got a body on him. Alexander got the first hit, and that'll do it at the end of the first half. And what looked like a blowout turns out to be a very entertaining first half. Kings Point runs off toward the field house with a two-point lead at 16-14. You are looking at the number one selling full-size sedan in America. Award-winning quality car of the year. Model year to date, but Sabre has outsold all three LH cars combined. Think about it. Now with dual airbags and anti-lock brake standard. The 94 Buick Lus Sabre. Test drive it. Buy it. Lus Sabre and the whole family of 94 Buicks at your key Buick dealers of New England now. Welcome back. The third the kickoff to start the second half. Just moments away. WPI will kick off the Kings Point. 16-14 and a big comeback by WPI, John. WPI, the engineers really seized the momentum, David. They fell behind 16-0 less than five minutes into the game. It took them about 35 minutes to fight their way back in, but that they did. A couple of scores. Thanks to the passing game, they really opened things up. One a four-yard run by Ernie Ansa. The other, the 19-yard scoring pass from Burns to Johnson. But I think really that passing game is what opened it up. Important possession here for Kings Point now. They really have to regain the momentum that they lost. I think they might be talking to themselves a little bit as they prepare to receive this kick. Stan Farrell will kick it off. Deep is Brian Simpson as usual. The two upbacks are Rodney Keynes and Drew Beers. Uh, and they're set about the 15. Brian Simpson said it about the 10-yard line. Kind of interesting, John, when you've got a guy who can run the ball like Beers, and he's in on the special teams, and he's really not back in the prime position to feel the ball. And it's going down to about the 5, and there's Simpson. He's going to follow Beers coming up the left-hand side along the hash mark, and he has bounced out. I think it is a full win. win. Yep. Got him at about the 20, and uh, Simpson staggered ahead for another 10 yards, took it up over the 30-yard line, but uh, win came from that left-hand side side and nailed him on the thigh. He's had real good success in the return spot. Gives his team pretty good field position. Set the defense for WPI. They really got a reprieve. Alexander Duby and Laskowski are the front guys. Barrows, Joseph, who went and Matt Mercer, the linebackers, and Kevin Ranucci. And there's a planned off penalty flag. And they take it up. Beers takes it up to about the 34. Not a real lot. Maybe gain two yards on the play. And uh, finish up Renucci, Joseph, Chris Moore, and Matt Wasso are the defensive backs to finish setting the defense. And it uh, looks like uh, Kevin Fury is clapping as he goes back to the offensive line. So it could be a penalty on WPI, but that's not going to be the case. Yes, it is. And they're going to march it off. Five yarders, so it gives Kings Point kind of starts off the second half, John, like we start off the first half. Kings Point taking the advantage. They're going to be at first and five, and the balls are set on the 37-yard line. I think the uh, Kings Point offense lost a little rhythm when Clark went down in the second period. Dave, he's back in there. Let's see how they function as an entire unit now. That's a good point. Two tight ends. They go right back up the middle of Beers. He takes it, nudges, falls just ahead of the 40-yard line, picks up three. And it looks like the adjustments on the defensive end, John, were to tighten up that middle and see if they can take that game away because really they're setting themselves up in many cases with great second down three situations where they can pass it or they can just take the run and run it down their throat. Now the Mariners really dominated from tackle to tackle. Have to have a little gut check time for the engineer defense now trying to stuff them at the line of scrimmage. And a shot by the end zone. Here's Matt Wassel. He's playing up pretty tight about, of course he looks tighter than he is, but expecting it up the middle and that's exactly where it goes. 
and Beer is trying to fight ahead. And it doesn't look like he's going to get it. 78, Tony Tom Duby was in there in the middle of the play. Dan Joseph uh, as well as a host of guys in maroon shirts. And he is going to fall about a year, about a yard and a half short. Let's have a look at it here. This is a straight kind of dive play that was working so well for the Mariners in the first half of the game. Beer's looking for something straight ahead. There's nothing. They've got it all jammed up at the point of attack. Matt Mercer with the initial hit on the play, able to turn him back. They are measuring to see if he was able to get the first down, but still a good defensive stand by WPI. And that certainly is a good sign for uh, WPI. They had problems right off the start. But as you said, John, they lost their rhythm when Clark went out of the game after he took the big hit off the pass that fell incomplete. But uh, this is going to be a third and one situation. And doubt we'll see a surprise, but they had shown an ability to go on that play action. Look, Pete Fury, generally the target. He's wide out to the right, two men deep in the eye back, two tight ends. Doesn't look like a formation where they're going to go deep, but they've done it before. Playing Brian Clark over center. Looks like they tried to pull him off, and it goes to Beers, and he is stopped at about the 43-yard line. Looks to me like he got it. The Joseph, defense closed pretty quickly, though. Joseph and Wheeler were there for the stop, but I'm not sure if they're going to mark the second effort. Uh, Beers, as usual, keeps those legs churning when he gets that first contact at the line of scrimmage. Able to turn a little bit as they make the turn, waiting for the spot. It is close. I think they'll have to measure again. Alexander also in there on the stop. He came from the right defensive end. And uh, they didn't really get a favorable spot there, John. It looked no. like they, they kind of brought it back. Again, it did look like his second effort on that momentum may have been enough to give him the first down. The spot is problematic. But not for long. Official signal first down. The Mariner drive is alive. Not a lot of substitutions here on the defensive end. WPI has pretty much gone with 11 guys. They really haven't moved too many people in and out of the ball game. Okay, they're going to start it off at about the 43-yard line. First and 10, Kings Point trying to reestablish the dominance they had in the first half, first period. And it kind of went away, as we mentioned, with the injury to Clark. They lost their rhythm. Clark looking back to pass, looking deep for Fury. He's right there. Renucci in perfect position, and it's intercepted. Wassel came back from the free safety position and played it great. Renucci had Fury boxed out. And he just came and scooped the tip. Wassel played, Wassel played center field on this one. Renucci with the single isolation coverage on Fury. And it is a tough assignment because of Fury's leaping ability. Take another look here. Clark with plenty of time. Time to kill as his offensive front just sets up and keeps everyone at bay. He floats it out there as he has for Fury. But in this case, Renucci keeps the feet moving. Able to get in position and tip it. Fury actually may have kept the ball alive. And Wassel is right there on the spot playing deep center field. Kicks it off before it hits the Omni turf. And now the engineers are coming back the other way. You might say it's as good as a punt, except for the fact that it came on first down. And they go right to Woolley, who had a really tough first half, but he's got room here over the 30. And he accelerates up to, it's knocked out of bounds by Keynes. And he picks it up at about the 34. Could get the first down, or it's pretty close. Ken Curris was in a little extracurricular activities. And we do have a flag on the play, so there may be something. <laughs> I'm not sure which way the call will go. I think Curris got it. Looks to me like it was Curris got up off the carpet and kind of initiated that. It's going to go over the 40, 35 yard line. That's going to give him a first down Another look if here. it holds. Willie gets his first shot here in the second half. Again, breaking to his left as he likes to do. And loses first two tackles and then he's got a lot of open field. Starts tearing up the sideline looking to avoid. Is that Keynes on the hit there? Rodney Keynes on the hit. Rodney Keynes knocks him out of bounds, but the action that occurred at the line of scrimmage was to the benefit of the engineers. Now they pick up a little bit of extra yardage. And that's a personal foul. They've got it up into Mariner territory at about the 49-yard line, first and 10. WPI now is pretty much established a momentum, John, and they get the first break of the half. Here we go to the draw to Woolley again, and he is grabbed in the backfield by number 58, Steve Brody, who penetrated from the nose guard and slowed Woolley down into uh, going to wind up in no gain. Right there. They just had a disaster start last half. Now they're getting off to a better better start to their liking. Watching again the misdirection play. A little bit of subterfuge. They go to fake the draw, give it to Woolley, and let him turn. 
good pursuit, however, by the Mariners, able to stop him at the line of scrimmage. Uh, generous. The scoreboard's got it at second and nine. That's generous. Second and nine and a half, I think. But in any event, two wide receivers, both are to the right. Swedick and Johnson, they roll that way. Burns has got a lot of room, and he's going deep. Johnson is open at the 10. He's got it. He's got it. Steve Johnson, second touchdown connection between those two. Another look here as Burns rolls to his right. Again, rolling to his strong hand. We spoke about that earlier. Just floats it up in the air, and Johnson is way ahead of the defense. Calls it in. At this point, it's a foot race for about the last five or eight yards. No contest. Simpson brings it down in the end zone, but Steve Johnson with his second touchdown catch of the game. Third on the season. That was just the speed and a, and a brilliant move by Steve Johnson, North Attleboro, Massachusetts, to take the fake outside and then cut it back in. And it looks like WPI is going to go is going to go um, for two. Nice little run for Johnson here. Uh, caught a 76-yard touchdown pass last week against Norwich. Today he's got a 19-yarder and a 49-yarder, both for scores. And we just got the stat of the day from statistician Jennifer Heppel. She said WPI is 1-0 is in games that Johnson scored two touchdowns. And the Burns looking to pass in traffic, and it's caught. Swedick coming across the middle, and that one was thrown in the traffic, and it's like a magnet. The ball just got eyes, went straight through, and Swedick caught it going down on the carpet. Tumbling just inside the end zone. Obviously, the route was timed just perfectly. Here's another look at the touchdown. Watch again as they roll Burns to his strong side, to his right, able to buy some time with a good block from Willie, looks downfield and just waits for Johnson to run into the open territory, floats it right out there. At this point, it's all Johnson. Great camera work as he outruns the defensive secondary. Simpson comes in too little, too late, pulls him down in the end zone, but it's too late again. It looked like he was supposed to, Holman was supposed to get some help on the inside from Simpson, and he didn't get there in time. And he had to got the step on, on, uh, on Holman. 22-16. Three play drives, 76 yards. The engineers chew up a lot of turf with some help from the penalty that was assessed against the Mariners' defense. In any case, they seize the lead now at 22-16, and I think we have seen a decided shift in momentum, David, a 22-point run by WPI. And now WPI, and they just stalled in their first drive. Are they going to change their strategy a little bit? Of course, the pass just got them in trouble the last time, but really it didn't give great field position to WPI. They just took it and marched it down the field. So uh, this has pretty been a pretty interesting game. Amazing turnaround. There are the deep men, Rodney Keynes and Brian Simpson. Drew Beers on the far side. They're the triumvirate that's back there to receive it. Simpson, the deep man, at about the seven-yard line. Stan Farrell's going to step into it to 35, sends it straight down the middle, kind of a knuckle ball of a kick. Simpson's got it, he's over the 20, and he's got some room to the 30. He's in the open at the 40, and he is going to be run out of bounds by Renucci, who came from the middle of the field to catch up to Brian Simpson. Kevin Renucci makes the play, but not before Simpson takes it into engineer territory at about the 47. Another look at this day. Maybe Brian Simpson a little bit juiced after having been burned on that last pass for the touchdown takes it up the sideline and he gets an immediate crack spots it and heads right for it as he gets that spin out block right there takes it upfield there's one guy with a chance after he gets by wheeler and that guy is renucci renucci's able to stay with him and just knock him out of bounds could have been a lot much more pardon me a lot more yardage for simpson on that one it's simpson's longest return of the year about 50 yards and beers goes over look had him by the back of the helmet maybe that looks like but uh, beers got it into Back over the 50, but not much more. They're going to set it at the 49, which is about a half-yard loss. So now it looks like Kings Point is the is the engine with the wheels, or the car with the <laughs> wheels falling off, because they had some problems. Now it's just, you know, three minutes, three and a half minutes to go in the first half, I mean, excuse me, in the third period, and it's WPI that's completely taking command. Joe Laskowski with a big stop for WPI on that last play. Second and 11, now they're going to go to pass. Clark looking downfield, throws short, and it's Fury, I believe, with the reception. And uh, at about the 43-yard line, Make it Bolter. Scott Bolter with the reception. 
Sure. Those wide receivers look alike to me. <laughs> One more look here. Brian Clark trying to find his rhythm here, trying to get the Mariners rolling in the second half. Nice sharp pass into heavy traffic. Volker's able to turn it upfield. Close to the front. Uh, picks up about six yards, I guess. Not Joseph, as much as it looks. Joseph and Mercer in on the tackle. Okay, Volker and Fury come to the left. Long set. Power eye in the backfield. Far right is Barbo. Or Barbs. Check, excuse me. Mark Lippie's going to throw. Looked like he's going to throw to Beers. And there it is to Volker. And he was hit before at about the 40 and struggles ahead to about the 37, 30, somewhere between the 37 and 38, and it's going to be good enough for a first down. Clark taking advantage of a quick hitting pass plays now. Nothing fancy here. Straight drop. Looks up and finds Volkert again. Second play in a row. Volkert with that turn, Dave, as you mentioned, able to get around Wassel and pick up the first down. And maybe we do see a variation on the strategy they were using. They were either going power between the guards and tackles, or they were going deep. Now they're throwing the underneath passes at the possession receiver Volker. Okay, Beers is a penalty flag. Beers and that play is going to be stopped. That was a fake draw. Clark was rolling to the right. The kind of play usually looks like Fury's going to get it, but we had some movement on the left side of the Kings Point line, and they're going to march it off five yards, so we're looking illegal procedure. It's going to be first and 15 from about the 42. We'll have a look here. Peter Barb, I think, the left end is a little bit anxious on the play. He comes up ahead of the rest of the pack. Barb jumps, sets the WPI defense off, brings the whole play to a screeching halt. 9.59 left here in the third period. First and 15 for, for Kings Point. Okay, Barb is here on the right-hand side with Fury. Fury in the slot. Raganese is down in an H-back, and it's Beard to the right. Beard with a nice block on Alexander as they look over down the field. And Volkert is open again. He makes the catch and is ridden out of bounds by Moore. Number 20, Chris Moore, the cornerback. But Volkert's doing the job now, John. And it's interesting how the coaches are going back and forth and changing their strategy. And it's been the pass on both sides really has gotten the ball moving. And you have to wonder if Scott Volker may have gone back into the huddle and told Clark that he thinks he had a read on his defender, able to drive him back and get that short stuff, then turn it around for the game. A quick look at that play for the first down. Very quick. We needed it to be very quick because we're right back there. Oh. First down, they went for a dive on Beers. A late flag on that play. Fu Win is caught doing something of a sumo squat, I would have to call it, on top of one of the interior linemen for the Mariners. That's going to cost WPI probably 15 yards. It's one of those boys will be boys moves. Bad spot to get it, except for the fact that it can't be 15 nope, yards since it's inside, inside the 30. 30. Thank you. That's how he'll rationalize it when they're looking at it in the films. <laughs> <laughs> it's only an eight yard penalty, coach. It was certainly an interesting celebration. Uh, but it, the, the spot is something that's important. It's on the 11 yard line, so it even gives Kings Point a chance to get a first down inside, so they've got maybe eight cracks of getting a touchdown here from the 11. Clark over center, and there's the misdirection. Good fake by Clark, throws it underneath, and it comes up short to Fury. Bernucci underneath, or on top of the coverage, but the ball bounced up short. Real nice ball fake. I thought Ed Escobedo was carrying the ball away to the left. Meanwhile, looked up and found Clark rolling to his right. They got me. I know that. That was a good. <laughs> that was a good fake in the in, in the uh, in the backfield. I thought Escobedo was gonna, and he had room on the left hand side too. I was already all ready to rev up a touchdown call going down. <laughs> no go. Just a fake. Pass came up short. Escobedo stays in the ball game. Volkert and Fury in the left hand slot. Wide out is Barb to the right. Passing formation, second and ten. Clark looking in the middle, and he's grabbed. He's out of trouble, though. He spins away, and he's looking in the middle of the end zone, and there's Fury. No, it's Volkert. Touchdown. Great Volkert, the main man, he just has took it all the way down the field, playing underneath underneath the defense the whole time, and Clark got out of trouble. Another look at the spectacular play by Brian Clark. Not only does he avoid the big hit right there by Mark Alexander, as he rolls to his right, he's thinking about Fury. Fury is heavily covered. He looks back and finds Volker standing all alone momentarily. Gets enough on the ball to get it into Volker before the hit for the touchdown. Great reaction play by Brian Clark. And I'll tell you the other thing on Clark. Did you notice when he was rolling right, he had his hand wrapped around the ball. He wasn't running for his life. He looked like he was going to run. 
And there's the kick, and it is up. And I think it landed somewhere around Shrewsbury. That baby was tagged, and it is good. And now Kings Point is back in the lead at 23-21. What a ball game. We'll be back. Worcester Polytechnic Institute, founded in 1865, is dedicated to educating talented young men and women in engineering, science, management, and the humanities, preparing them for careers of professional practice, civic contribution, and leadership. But success at WPI is not measured solely by a student's academic advancement. The excellence exhibited by our students in the classroom is paralleled in the athletic arena, where our student athletes consistently produce many winning seasons. On the playing fields, football, field hockey, and soccer have all recently been recognized as among the most competitive teams in New England, with individuals in the sports of track and field, cross country and wrestling, regularly vying for the top spots in their respective conferences or in postseason competition. WPI, leading education into the 21st century. We're back, and there's the correct score, 23-22, not 23-21, as previously stated. One more look at this play, Dave. Again, a brilliant execution by Brian Clark. Very aware of the situation on the field here. Watch the way he just, puts it away after he swings away from just trouble. Feels Alexander puts it, again, you're right, saves trouble there, avoids the second hit, and as he rolls right, you're right, he's got it tucked. He's looking to run. Now he looks up and sees Fury. Thinks different of it as when he sees Volker looking back. Just a great reaction play to look back across the defense more with the hit in the end zone, but Volker with the real good hands hangs on after the heavy hit for the score. Okay, O'Connell in the game, and he drives it deep. Lohan has got it about the 15-yard line, and he's coming to the far side of the field. Went to cut it up at about the 25, lost his footing. Another player who lost his footing, but he looked like he might have some room if he could have made that cut. Yeah, Lo both uh, return men, Dave, Simpson and Lohan, very aggressive when they get the ball. You know, they're not looking just to settle for something beyond the 20. They're looking to break them. Good excitement here for the special teams. Of course, the only person who might have, uh, other person who could have made that cut other than Lohan might have been Gail Sayers because that one was turning on a dime. And we have a penalty flag. The ball is going to be marched back. Generally going to be a hold. I was going to say a clip. I won't say it, though. It looks like a hold. And a WPI now starts in a back, actually where they caught the ball, the 15-yard line. And uh, that has not deterred them. They have scored three touchdowns in the last two times they've had the ball. One, of course, called back. They start in with a tight, well, two wide out. Johnson way right. And here comes Swedek in motion in the slot. They go to Woolley the other side. He's got some room, and he's over the 20, and he has got some running room to about the 23-yard line. That's about a 7-yard gain, and Woolley, who struggled in the first half, John, 15 yards on 14 carries, now is starting to get some room to operate. Mike Holman able to knock him out of bounds. Woolley's doing what he likes best, Dave. He's breaking to his left, has a phalanx of blockers out there. Leahy with a real good hit takes down one defender. At that point, it's Woolley in the open field. Instead of pulling the Franco Harris, as you indicated earlier, he turns it upfield, takes the hit from Holman, and takes it out of bounds, but not before picking up seven yards. Didn't mean anything by it, Franco. <laughs> Big fan, liked that catch. Immaculate reception. Here comes Leahy in motion. Now he stops in the H-back set. They're going back to Woolley, and he is hit immediately. Torres on the penetration from the right-hand side. And I don't think that play has worked very well. That's been the story. Watch the penetration right from the middle of your screen. That's been the story with Woolley. Some big gains, and then he hasn't had a lot of operating room. Look at Torres coming right in. Boom, he's right there. And he ran in the back door, John, on the, where the, where the uh, left guard pulled out. It just pulled, exactly. They vacated just to try and get something going around the right side for Woolley. In this case, Torres was moving as quickly as the guard was pulling away. In this case, it was the right guard for... Left guard. Left guard, pardon me. Fred Bradley, I believe, was able to pull, and Curtis has filled the spot, pulled Woolley down from here in the back there. He burns back to pass. He's looking downfield. There's Swedek. Oh! Almost had it at the 40. Great effort by Swedek. Hit the turf hard. And that was a timing play because Swedek, he just threw it up there and let him try and run under it. That's not going to be the case. Burns, Burns really getting into a rhythm here. He's completed 43% of his passes on the year. And again, with that throw off his back foot, it's hard to imagine how he can do it with such frequency just beyond the reach of the diving Swedek. And I'll tell you, Swedek had Simpson beat again. But it was just, uh, the pass was just not there. 11, 10 guys in the line of scrimmage are going for the block, and it is somehow, right
right through his arms, and there's Simpson. He's got it at the 43. There's not a lot of room to go, and he has run out of bounds. Manucci on the coverage for the engineers, and as they set the change positions on the field, let's watch the kick that Farrell managed to squeeze me through. From our angle, it looked like it went straight through the arms. It did. <laughs> that was close. What Holman, a kick. Holman in with the near block. Well, we have for the first time. Now we've got uh, the momentum go back to Kings Point. Great field position. Good job by Simpson to get it up, catch it, not allow it to bounce on the turf. He took it up to the 47-yard line. Ergel started on the right, then they moved him over to the left. Here goes Barb in motion to the right, and they're going to go to Beers up the middle. He's got some running room, and he's by Alexander, who catches him, and he drags Alexander to about the 49-yard line. But uh, that looked like it was going to go for more than it did. Just a little improvisational shift by Beers there. Again, David, it did look like there was room for him in the middle. He gets to the line of scrimmage. The opening closes quickly, though. He breaks it out to his right, starts looking for room, but at this time now, the pursuit led by Wheeler is just too much. They pull him down before he can get to the sideline. And what looked like it might have been a nice gainer for Kings Point turns into a two-yard pickup. Okay, second and eight. Just over seven minutes left in the third period. Fury is in motion. Clark with the long count, and he goes to Fury in the flat. Moore, he slips Moore's tackle and goes up for the first down over the 40. Takes him to about the 39-yard line. Moore just couldn't get his hands around Fury, who's pretty elusive and big for a wide receiver. Tall, good leaping ability, and also good hands as we watch some of the canine fans take the field here. He just airs it out there. Clark does nice hands by Fury, catches it, reaching across his body, turns it upfield quickly, and really, again, takes a hit. Just enough to get him up the sideline for the first down before Poo Win can make the hit. And there is a penalty on the, on the field, and it looks like they're, march, they're gonna march it back against King's Point. King's Point now is gone. That's the first short pass we've seen go to Fury, John, and they're going with that stuff in the flat. And maybe it, maybe this may, I shouldn't say it's a change in strategy. Perhaps it's what they wanted to do all along, stretch out the field with the long passes to Fury, and then go under in the second half. Take the underneath stuff and work with Volkert on their last possession. Volkert caught three passes to help them move downfield. This time they're trying to go to Fury underneath, but the holding call negates the game. It'll be second and seven from the WPI 49. activity for second and seven. Here's Clark. He's looking to pass over the middle, and he is grabbed by and eludes it and hit from behind by Alexander. Big hit. Somebody else in a red shirt was underneath the pile. It kind of got Clark up moving in the beginning, but Alexander, who was pushed out of the play, pursued and came back in. Another look here. Clark is able to elude that first hit, but Fu Win is the one who challenges him. He sets up here. The pocket collapses. He decides to get his way out of trouble. He starts pushing up field to lose that first tag. His full win with the challenge. That gets him looking the other way. And Wheeler with a big hit drives him into the ground. Brian Clark taking heavy hits, paying a toll here tonight. Okay, I've got about a third and seven situation. Kings Point wants to move the ball a little bit more. They're back to pass. They're throwing it almost every down. And there is Volkert, the man who's wide open. And he is picked up and somehow regains his feet. Chris, Chris Moore picked him up in the air. He dropped him back down. And he, Volkert picked up about three more yards. Brian Clark pretty slowly making his way down the field, having real good success. But again, he's paying a price on me turf. It's on me turf if you're Brian Clark. <laughs> able to hit Volkert, who turns it up again. Chris Moore with the big hit, lifts him up and throws him to the ground. They move the ball down. First down. Bolgert's fifth catch in the third quarter, John. Still 10 minutes to go. More than 10 minutes, or just 10 minutes gone here in the third period. Just under six minutes to go in the third period. A lot of football left. Here goes the handoff to Beers. And now it's setting it up for him as he goes over the 20 to about the 17. And he's going to move it up to about, uh, going to have a second and third situation. Have a look here. Clark on the move, able to hit Volker, who's had great success working that sideline. In this case, he challenges Moore, gets a little bit of a ride there before being slammed down to the turf. That was a first down pickup, and on the succeeding play, Looks picked like a up rodeo. seven. Looks like a rodeo there. Anyway, second down, three to go. Need to get it to about the 15-yard lines. Beer is the lone setback. Clark over center. 
two wide outs to the left, two tight ends in the game, and they go to Beers, who's hit in the backfield by number, who do we have, Laskowski, number 90. Nose guard Joe Leskowski, former ECAC honor roll player already this year, has had real good success anchoring the middle of that defense. St straightens up the center. Rob, Lay Rob Laws, in this case, shakes him off and meets Beers head on at the line, puts him down for no gain. It's now third and four. They, made, they must have made, they made some good adjustments. There's Big Joe, Meriden, Connecticut. Native made some big adjustments, WPI, and the way they've uh, tried to slip the blocking and change maybe some of the angles because w, uh, Kings Point is not running the ball nearly as effectively as they did in the first part of the game. Clark back to pass. And he's out of pressure. He's got to get to the 15. He's got the first down. He doesn't go back, and he's run out of bounds. Renucci pushed him out of bounds as a penalty went up in the air at about the 10. Looks to me like Clark got it up to about the 10, John. Good, again, good pursuit, David. He didn't want to give up on that on that first down flag. Once he got the first down, he turned it upfield to get a little bit more. I think he took a late hit after he'd gone out of bounds. Renucci among those in pursuit. Good work by Brian Clark. He's moving the ball well, whether it's with the pass or with the run when he takes it under his wing. As the ball moves up, that's the 10th penalty for no, WPI no. tonight. 85 yards in penalty yardage. Clark is very lateral there as he gets by Laskowski. And just breaks it up to the outside. Renucci can't put him down as he stays up and goes out of bounds. Looks like full win took him out a little bit with a little bit of extra mustard on it. And here goes... Ed like Escobedo again. Ed Escobedo, sorry. Escobedo on the Ball goes inside the five to about the four-yard line. Escobedo with a lot of room here running to the left. This is the play where they faked before, David. Faked it to Escobedo and rolled to the opposite side. In this case, Escobedo gets the ball. Good ball carry and takes it all the way down inside the five-yard line. Kind of threw me. His, his uniform was so clean I could see his number. Couldn't get it there. Anyway, power back and Beers has the ball and he bolts ahead for the touchdown and he just exploded after the first hit and just took it on through as he came out of the fullback spot in the wishbone. He left three WPI defenders on the ground in his wake. This wasn't second effort. This was third effort. Drew Beers, again, coming from the fullback spot, not customarily his position, just hits the line with such force, takes this first hit, great camera work as he hits the first line of resistance, gets those feet back on the ground and starts churning again, shakes off Mercer, leaves him behind, runs away from Wheeler, and look at that lunge. And it looked like he was fumbling the ball and regained it on the way into the end zone. Right past Moore into the end zone. Beers already has over 130 yards on the day. O'Connell goes in to kick it, and he delivers it through. They're going to get the extra point. He is Now he is 15 for 18 on the season, and Kings Point moves it out to an eight-point lead, 30-22, and we're coming back. The United States Merchant Marine Academy provides the American Merchant Marine, U.S. Armed Forces, and the American transportation industry with career professionals known for superior discipline, integrity, and strict adherence to the Academy's motto, Acta Non Verba, Deeds, Not Words. Situated on Long Island Sound at Kings Point, New York, the Academy is just 30 minutes from New York City. It features the most advanced maritime training centers in the world, in addition to extensive laboratories and waterfront facilities. The four-year program is a well-rounded curriculum with solid professional courses. The midshipmen spend one year at sea visiting the four corners of the world, augmenting their practical education, receiving at graduation a Bachelor of Science degree and a commission in the Naval Reserve. The Academy is renowned for a rich tradition of service to the nation. In peacetime, its graduates serve the nation's commerce, while in time of national emergency, Kings Pointers serve as the fourth arm of defense. The U.S. Merchant Marine Academy at Kings Point, New York, the world's foremost maritime educational institution. One more time from the end zone camera. Drew Beers from the fullback spot just hits Mercer with a big thump. Mercer tries to wrap him up and bring him down, but again, once those legs hit the ground, Beers keeps turning. That's good for his second touchdown of the game, his ninth rushing touchdown of the year, as he makes those Kings Point fans forget all about a fellow named Wes Stearns. I'll tell you something else, though. He landed on the back of the offensive lineman. If he had not been there, he might have went down. It was a fortunate break. Hey, the kickers are certainly getting a workout here. Here are Ernie Ansa and Lohan back to receive the kick. Mike O'Connell is in the game. He certainly is getting a workout. 
And uh, they have kicked the ball away from Answer. They're, they're, uh, one time he's touched the ball today, he scored a touchdown. So this time he's going to get it at about the right, just shy of the 20. He's going right up the middle. Answer's open. He is broken free. He's over the 50. And he's got a, he's got a panel to beat. And a beautiful jump behind. And he is going to go all the way. Spectacular play by Ernie Answer, Dave. As you indicated, he touched the ball once today and scored a four-yard touchdown. This time he does himself a lot better. They're going 82 yards, bringing WPI right back into the game. Takes the ball in stride, coming up to meet the ball, and goes right up the gut. Gets one quick block there. A couple of defenders take themselves out, and it's off to the races. They move on O'Connell, where he jumps over O'Connell, beats him out. O'Connell does the job, or at least gets there to do the job. Once he hurdles O'Connell, now it's Charlie Lewis in pursuit. Lewis just doesn't have the wheels to catch up with Answer, who breaks it, his second touchdown of the game. Again, the engineers right back in it. They trail by two, 30 to 28, as they prepare for the conversion. Steven Damo, the kicker for Worcester, is going to get a, uh, a complex here. He hasn't been on the field yet because they're going for two again. Three people wide to the right, one wide to the left. The duel of the lone setback, and they throw in the middle to Woolley, and they've got it. And we have a tie ball game with 3:11 left in the third period. This is unbelievable. Great comeback by the engineers. Nothing like coming home. One more time, the same view as Anthony takes the ball inside at about the 20, pardon me, about the 18-yard line, turns it up the other. And look at this opening in the middle. All of the Kings Point defenders are caught in over pursuit there way back. At this point, Anthony's got O'Connell one-on-one. Watch the moves here. Let Anthony's moves tell the story. Again, gets O'Connell in over pursuit at this time. Now Lewis is the only guy with a shot. He makes a futile dive. Anta high steps it into the end zone, and the engineers are right back in the ball game. We're tied at 30-30. And the official return was 85 yards. That's one shy of the record for WPI. Byron Womack did it against Iona in 1989. And uh, the momentum continues to shift. I was about to say, I was about to say, uh, WPI better do something, but I didn't have a chance to say it. <laughs> and now it is 30-30. A familiar sight, Stan Farrell. This is the most I've ever seen a kicker. He just finished saying that the kickers were getting a real workout today. Farrell back on the field one more time. The deep man is Simpson. We talked earlier about the way that Lohan and Simpson were going at it. Ernie Anta stepped up and steals the spotlight from those guys. Serve now belongs to Simpson. Okay, Brian Simpson back. Canes and Beers, the up guys, they're at about the 19-yard line or so. Getting kind of used to getting used to this formation. What an onside kick. Let's make this game interesting. Getting kind of boring here. 30-30. <laughs> still to go in the third period. And Farrell booms one. And Simpson's got it at the four. And he's coming up the left hash mark. He's got some room. And he cuts to the middle. And then he goes down at about the 27-yard line. Who win in on the tackle? The first guy to hit him. Brian Learned also in on the hit. Again, David, it looked like Simpson had some room to maneuver. He started doing a little bit of that juking there. Cut back to the right. I think he ran into a little more traffic. But not a bad return. He set them up at the 28-yard line. Now it's, again, serve is to the Mariners. Steve Astorino was also in on that tackle. 19-yard return for Simpson. They've got two guys in the backfield, and they go to the run. There's Beers. He tries to jump over. Full win. Doesn't, he gets over the top there, but doesn't gain much. Probably went down at about the 28-yard line. Doesn't look like much of a gain. In fact, it's a loss of the yard. Another look here. Beers, again, already over the 140-yard mark in this game. We're just midway through, pardon me, just late into the third quarter. He's got a long way to go. In this case, Beers tries to take the high road. No room there. He's pulled down after a very, pardon me, he's got a loss of one. Actually, I thought he got across the line of scrimmage. Two guy Dan Joseph also in on the play. Wideouts left and right. Clark looking to pass, looking over the middle. Lots of time. And there's a collision in the middle of the field. Are we going to get a penalty flag? No, we're not. Barb ran into Mercer, but they were both, kind of looks like the Keystone Cops running in different directions, and boom. No call, just as the ball arrived. Inadvertent contact. 
So we had sets up a third down and 11 to go. Ball will be snapped from about the 27-yard line. Take a look at the replay coming out of the middle. Watching the middle of your screen. Mercer sees the drop, so right away he falls into his hook zone. Watching the left-hand side of the screen, Mercer's looking to go in pursuit. That Stops looks like a hit to me. <laughs> it was a delivered blow. Clark back inside, pitch to Volkert. Who else? And he takes it over the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Play always worked for Roger Staubach and Drew Pearson, you know. Didn't get much here as he goes over, but I love the play. And uh, that's a forward pass. It's not very dangerous and uh, usually very deceptive. Nice job by the left-hand side of the engineer defense. Volker makes his sixth catch of the day. He's moving up quickly in the all-time receiving list at Kings Point, having a big day here as he keeps linking up with Brian Clark. However, it's not enough. Fourth and sixth, okay. and they will punt. Fury is on to punt. Lohan and Swedek are back. Fury launches one. Boy, that baby is drilled to about the 30-yard line. And Lohan looked like he was going to take a fair catch, decided better of it, but just stood there and took the hit. Tried to step and out of bounds. I think he thought about it, but Sam Hansen was right there and made the decision for him. <laughs> Delivered the hit to an immobile, hand, uh, immobile Lohan. Uh, sets up the engineers at about the 28-yard line. Kind of like a guy who can take a hit, though. John Madden would like him. We got a shot at the old Madden team. Here he is. Moment of indecision. Maybe he was just happy he made the catch, because that's a pretty good catch. And there he is going, okay, what are we going to do here? Uh, I think I'll take the hit. Boom. And uh, there's Swedek looking for a Patriot-style play handoff. <laughs> that would have been a good idea. And here we go to Woolley coming back up off the left-hand side, shakes off one tackle and delivers the blow out of, out of bounds. Rodney Keynes drags him out of bounds. Rodney... <laughs> Rodney uh, hit Willie in the knee with his face on that one, but that was a uh, good play by Willie just to kind of deliver the blow. Rodney Kane took him out of bounds. It's going to be about a five-yard, six-yard gain, second and four. Jason Willie deciding it is better to give than to receive. Delivers a heavy blow to Kane, knocks him out of bounds, and he'll get a blow. Ernie Anta apparently has impressed the WGI coaching staff sufficiently that they'll give him an offensive series here. Two for two here for Anta. Touched the ball twice, two touchdowns. One, an exciting 85-yard touchdown run, and uh, that doesn't count. We have whistle on the play. Looks like illegal procedure and uh, penalty. That's a hurtful penalty on the part of WPI as it moves them back. They had great field position for a second down. Now they're going to be second and nine. It's marched off. It looked like they were trying the same play again. The pitch to answer working the left side. Like Woolley, he has great explosive speed. Maybe a little more elusive in the broken field as we saw on the kickoff return. But we won't know because they get five marked off against him. It'll be second and nine. He's also got the strong legs. He's got really uh, uh, as run in the style reminiscent of Walter Payton to me with the very hard churning legs tough to bring down. He is the deep man in the eye. Padula in front of him. Two wide outs to the right. And they're going to roll wide. Burns has got a lot of room. He throws to Johnson who does not make the catch. Had his hands on it. But Simpson was right there to drill him in the back. And Johnson let it go. Shaking his hand as he gets up. Took a real hit in the hand with the helmet of Simpson as he tried to set up there. Good fake here. Answer comes up with a good block to stop the trailing pursuit. That allows Burns to roll to his right again. The strong side. Ball on the other side of the receiver in this case might be caught. The ball thrown to the inside. Johnson gets hit on the hand with the helmet of Simpson. Perhaps the ball to the outside he might have been able to hang on to. Good timing on the part of Brian Simpson. And uh, engineers bring it out. Johnson and Swedek are going to come to the right. Padula, the lone setback, answer in the slot. And Mike Lohan is also out left. Burns looking to the middle of the field, and he's got Lohan, and it bounced around. Lohan had his hands on it. Keynes got a shot at it, and then it dropped free. But uh, actually, it was right there. Mike Lohan could have had his hand, could have uh, come up with that ball. I think Lohan had two shots at this one. Plenty of time for Burns as he drops back again, using the straight drop in this in this situation. Looks over the middle and puts it right on the spot. Lohan just can't get the hands up. Keynes with a little knock. Lohan gets another shot. Falls harmlessly to the ground. Farrell will punch it away for the engineers. You know what Bob Trumpy would have said about that? Should have had it. Farrell gets ready, gets the ball off. Simpson's got it about the 35, and he's coming to the far side of the near side of the field. The beautiful tackle by full win in the open field, and he just dropped Simpson in his tracks, and it looked like he had a little bit of room. 
I think what happened here is Travis Dampier, one of the blockers for Kings Point, was caught in a position where he would have had to have clipped Fu Win. Let's take another look at it here. Good kick by Farrell. Gets it downfield. Simpson setting for a return to the left-hand side. Catches the ball on the far side of the field. And here comes the pursuit. In this case, he breaks it to the left. And now Dampier is right there looking to help him out. Decides he has to back off the block. Fu Win goes right through and pulls him down. Avoids the penalty, but doesn't do Simpson any good. And the ball goes out to Fury, who's got it on the sidelines, and he is free. And he is going to take it into the 20, the 5, and he is going over for a touchdown. Short pass in the flat, now turns it back to a Kings Point lead at 36-30. From the 33-yard line, I think he just gave that one quick slip to the defender who came up on him. Don Joseph got caught flat-footed. Fury with a quick turn. I think maybe Joseph thought he was going to step out of bounds. Instead, Fury turns it upfield, takes it all the way home. Now, it's back to the Mariners. Too bad we didn't get an exciting game to do today, John. <laughs> 38 seconds still remain in the third period. And O'Connell is back on the field. He has drilled it straight through 37-30. Kings Point back in the lead with seven to go. Let's take a look at the replay just in the lower left right-hand part of your screen. Fury just sets up and takes the button hook. And the close comes in on Moore, who just couldn't make the tackle. He had no help from behind. Joseph got caught. And then it's just a race as Fury just outruns Joseph. He had too much of a lead. Fury takes it in. 37-30, 38 seconds still remaining in the third period. Kevin Fury with his fifth touchdown of the season. We talked about uh, his elusiveness and his leaping ability as a receiver. We should probably point out that he's the co-captain of the basketball team. I wonder if he scores this many points in a basketball game. <laughs> Doesn't get him six at a time, I know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't shoot him from where you did, that's why. <laughs> O'Connell is back on the is back on the field. He's gonna boom it from the 35. Ernie Ansa looks wonder if they'll kick it away from Ansa. <laughs> Go to Mike Lohan. I don't think Mike Lohan will catch this one and stand still on the sideline, however. He's got the black socks on, Mike Lohan does. In fact, everybody does. Well, Ernie Anta has that tape on his shoes, the spats effect. I really like that. Um, Lenny Moore. Yeah, Lenny Moore, just like the running backs. Sayers used to do that occasionally on the real heavy mud fields. A great look. I don't know how much it has to do with effectiveness of the run. No. They're switching now, trying to set it up so Anta gets the ball. And then they tried another fake. This time they do go to Lohan. And he's got it at the 20. They got a short kick out of the deal. And he is drilled at about the 25 and going, <laughs> going backwards. He lands at about the 25. Bryant Buddy. Bryant Buddy made the play, and he's come up with a couple of big hits. Lohan tries a little bit of lateral movement, and it's turned into reverse gear as he's hit by Buddy and driven back five yards. Lohan looked a little bit like a drunk lurching out of a bar room there, the way he broke suddenly to his left. It was not, it was not intended, but he gets the assist. But he's made a couple of big hits in the special teams and uh, held it to a five-yard return. Good special teams coverage because they did a nice job of getting a short kick with all the faking back there. Okay, Woolley is back in the game. They're going to go to the pass right away. Looking in the flat, Leahy wasn't open, and Burns gets rid of it at the feet of Johnson and then is taken down. Good job, good patience. And and uh, presence of mind on the part of Burns as he's chased down and tackled by Kouris, who came from the far side of the field. But uh, again, get Burns credit also for looking downfield and finding an eligible receiver. If you're going to throw it away, throw it at the way at the feet of a guy like Johnson. Couldn't pick up the short hop on that one, but again, I don't think that was Burns' intention at that point. I think he just wanted to get rid of the ball and prevent the loss. I have a question. With all these guys in the defense, with numbers four, we got 47 defensive end Ken Kouris. We've got a couple of linebackers at 46 and 45. Um, were these guys all converted running backs into different positions? <laughs> Versatility. Okay. WPI, three people wide to the right. Willie, one of them in the slot. They go to Leahy on the draw, and he's got a lot of room to rumble ahead, and he takes it over the 35 to the 37 and picks up another first down with still 13 seconds to go in the first half. He's paid Ty a price. Backman on the tackle, and Leahy, Leahy comes up lipping. He yeah. paid a price for that first down, David. Seems to be in some pain, favoring his right ankle as he comes off the field. He'll help him over to the sidelines, but with eight seconds left in the third period, Tom Burns has more pressing problems on his hand. 
okay, with three seconds to go in the half, it's going to run out. We'll take a break as well. Worcester Polytechnic Institute, founded in 1865, is dedicated to educating talented young men and women in engineering, science, management, and the humanities, preparing them for careers of professional practice, civic contribution, and leadership. But success at WPI is not measured solely by a student's academic advancement. The excellence exhibited by our students in the classroom is paralleled in the athletic arena, where our student athletes consistently produce many winning seasons. On the playing fields, football, field hockey, and soccer have all recently been recognized as among the most competitive teams in New England, with individuals in the sports of track and field, cross country and wrestling, regularly vying for the top spots in their respective conferences or in postseason competition. WPI, leading education into the 21st century. One more quarter of action left here at Alumni Field in Worcester, Massachusetts. Hopefully this will be the exciting period. Worcester with the ball, they go to Woolley who runs around and he goes out of bounds. Nice job of stringing that out and he runs out for about a four yard loss. Chorus in on the play. Hanson in on the play. Number two came up from the free safety among others who just forced Woolley out of bounds. This has really turned into an offensive showcase for both teams, David. We talked about the defense that King's Point has. I think they're going to go back and look at some films and figure out what they're doing wrong. I think a lot of it is what WPI is doing right, not just Woolley with the outside stuff, but again, Burns is doing just a great job finding his receivers downfield. I think that's really been the key. They got the passing game rolling, and that opened up some other spots. Spilling with the single setback, Burns looking for Woolley down underneath, and Woolley started to run with a lot of room before he caught it hit him in the face mask went through his hands and falls to the ground but uh, i tell you over here on the, the near side of the field he had a lot of room matt Leahy getting some attention on the sideline after that first down run he came off with an ankle injury but you're right david willie had the whole left side of the field open if he caught that pass he had momentum and he had real estate instead tries to run before he catches the ball it flops off his hands and again we should point out he is a very reliable receiver had a couple of passes get away from him today leaves the engineers with a third and 14 from the 32 yard line okay willie now back in the backfield deep man in the eye they fake it and it burns turns and throws downfield he's got swedick in and out of his hands swedick i should say in and out of his hands could have had that one at the 50 would have been a first down but that's not the case so they're going to have to turn it back over to king's point king's point with the lead at 37 30. what next <laughs> This is a lot of action for the first 20 seconds in the second half of the third, fourth period, excuse me. Stan Farrell in to kick it away yet again. Long for the season is 60 yards. He's got a 38.8 average. They could use a long one here. Ten guys in the line of scrimmage. Simpson back there by himself. The fearless Simpson. He's got it for 30. Running real estate. Beautiful block. And he goes down. Simpson goes down. But that block. Scott Volkert shows he can do more than catch the ball in the open field. He can also catch pursuing defenders in the open field as well. This time it was Nate Seifert who was caught leaning the wrong way. Here you see Simpson coming one way. Seifert the other. But boom. Volkert decides to stop him in his track doesn't do a lot for the return but it certainly does a lot for the highlight reel come monday morning <laughs> king's point is going to take the ball to a 30 yard line their defense john's already given up more po almost more points today than they've given up the whole season as wpi has got it on track but the mariners have the lead clark to pass in the flat the fury same play that got him the touchdown he jumps over Manucci, who came over on the coverage. Right. And again, a nice play there because uh, I think that pass may have been tipped. Fury showed good instincts, reacted well to the ball, tipped away from him. Maybe those with the basketball hands again made the catch turned upfield, almost hurdled Renucci. Instead, he's knocked out of bounds after about an eight-yard gain. Went for the jump, too, like a, like a basketball player, but uh, brings it up to a nine-yard gain. Kings Point seems to have gotten it back in gear now, and they've taken back the momentum. They get a score here. WPI's in the hole. Now they go right up the middle. One of the few carries that we've seen Mike Raganese get, and we've got a fumble, or it looks like a fumble. Certainly on the near side of the field, the red guys are pointing the other way. And so much for my question about momentum as the engineers come up 
with the ball. Who win emerges from the pack, holding the ball over his head. It took the officials a second to confirm it, but they did. As a jubilant who win comes to the sidelines. Watch this here as Kings Point tries to take it up the gut into the middle. They give it off. He never even had control of the ball. You can see the ball scored out there, fired into the pile in the scramble. Win was one of the last ones into the jam, but he came away with the ball. Who win with the fumble recovery? That puts the engineers in business at the Mariners 42 yard line. David, you talk about a momentum shift. They trail by seven and they've got the ball in enemy territory. Okay, we have we have Johnson and Swedick to the left. They're going with the single set back four wideouts. Looks like they're gonna pass. No surprise here. Burns rolls, throws it deep downfield to Swedick. It's gonna be intercepted by Keynes. Check that. Holman makes the interception. Number eight, the free safety. That baby was thrown up for grabs and it really kind of was thrown before Swedick had a chance to get there. I'm not sure if it was intentional. They had both Johnson and Swedick in that same area. Plenty of time here as Burns rolls out. He's been having plenty of time. Just floats it up in the air. Two receivers in the area. That brings three defenders over. In this case, Holman is the one with the best shot at it. Goes up, makes a nice leaping catch. Falls to the ground at about the eight-yard line. Big turnover. Puts the Mariners in business at their own eight. That Burns' is fifth interception of the season. Talk about momentum changes. We're back. Here's Beers, and he's up over the 10-yard line. Fights ahead. Mercer in on the in the among others in in the pileup. Mercer, Wassel, a couple of others. Beers again, proving very hard to bring down. Fights off a couple of tacklers, but is able to pick up about four. Chuck Warrington also went in the games. First time we've seen him. First. Uh, Another, another look at the play here on the interception. Again, the long throw by Burns may have overthrown his own arm in this case. Put it out so far. Holman able to backpedal and pull it down. But the pass, the, the defenders had about 15 yards on Swedek. He's never going to get a pass. Those guys, here goes Beers. He takes it up, barrels ahead to about the 17-yard line. Going to come up about a yard short. Going to have a third and one, I believe. Very big play for the engineer defense right now. They've got Kings Point bottled up. They haven't had a lot of benefit from field position. Most of the field position WPI has had tonight, they've earned the hard way by moving it downfield. If they could get a stop here, get a punch, perhaps they'll be in business at midfield. Matt Mercer, what a surprise, is another, another tackle. Got up a little bit slowly. Now, three wide out. Wolfert's in the slot. They tried to go with the misdirection. I believe it's Beers. And uh, he is stopped at the 16-yard line. No faking out. The engineers on that one. And it looks like Kings Point's going to have to kick it back as the punting unit comes on the field. That will put Fury back in business just at about his own four-yard line. One to now. If the engineers were set up for the return, well, they have two men back, so I would guess they're going to set up for the return rather than the block. In either case, they're set up at their own 45, so they're looking to come out of this with good field position. You got Ansa on the field. He's got the speed. Maybe looking to get him into. Looks like he was going to go, but he didn't do it. Fury gets it off. Whoa. It's going to be Swedek who's going to catch it in Lohan's area and a miscommunication. Swedek picks it up anyway. There's a daring move. <laughs> he goes out of bounds on the 28-yard line, but it should have been Lohan's ball all the way across a, a, a daring move i think a daring move i think coach morris might have another word for this <laughs> tape when he watches the film it definitely should have been taken by lohan he gives away to swedek swedek chases the ball rather than letting it run dead just picks it up and gets run right out of bounds immediately by hansen sam fortunate Han there wasn't something more negative coming out of that sam hansen and travis dampier were the two players down there to put Swedek and his daring move out of business. A mistake that cost the engineers at least 25 yards. Instead of having the ball in their 40, they're back inside the 25. That's a big mistake. Big field position mistake. But Woolley is over the 30, and he's free to about the 34-yard line. And that really has been the one play that's worked for Woolley today. Give him the ball back there and let him try and pick his hole. That time, he just took it straight up the middle. And somebody is down there on the field. Take a look at it again from the end zone. And Willie is got some room, fights off. He's going to pick up about six yards. Looked like he gained a little bit more, but he's coming out of the out of that 10-year spot in 10-yard <laughs> spot. Looked like a 16-yard pickup, just six. Okay, well, we've got to stop in the action. Let's take a break. Hi, 
everybody. I'm John Lasanti. And I'm Lyle Brown. We hope you're going to join us on our show, Sail New England, each week on Sports Channel. This is our best season ever. We've been to Alaska, the Caribbean, and now we're in Key West. That's right, on our Floridian Bahamian adventure. So join us, won't you, each week on Sail New England on Sports Channel. Don't miss it. Watch Sail New England every Sunday at 8.30 right here on Sports Channel. There's the replay on the play. Jason Woolley, the injured player down the field. Looked like a twisted ankle. And he got it just twisted from behind as he tried to break free. He got caught underneath. And now Anthony's in the ball game as a replacement. He takes it up just short of the 35-yard line. So we're going to have a third down. There's Jason Woolley as they're looking at him on the sideline. He's flexing that right ankle, Dave. You're right. That's the one that got caught under him in the pileup. Leaves Anta in the game. Don't give up a lot when you put Anta in there, but Willie has been inspirational. He's a senior co-captain, one of the leaders of the team. Anta now will have to pick up the burden in the backfield. Willie also the more experienced receiver, and this is a situation maybe where they're looking to do that, so uh, that could be the one difference. But we've got the fresh legs, and Anta coming in the game. He certainly has proved his worth as he's got two touchdowns already in the ball game. And uh, we're coming up on a third and three situation. Only one man in the backfield. That's Leahy. He's back in from an injury. And now they throw over the middle of Swedek. And he is drilled right as the catch. Great timing on the play by Sam Hansen, who came from the free safety spot playing there in the zone. And he just drilled Swedek right on time. Swedek was able to get up and walk away from this. We're happy to report. But Burns kind of hangs it out there. He's got a little bit of time. And they're going for the big one. They're not going for the three yards for the first down. Swedek has his hands on it, but Hanson, again, with a well-timed hit, as you said, the strong safety out of Glendale, Arizona, puts him down, and now the engineers have to kick it away. I'll tell you, they're lucky they didn't get a hold on, on uh, Don Perry as he kind of pushed the defender out of the way. Kind of a, not one of the better kicks of the day. Goes out at about the 33-yard line. Brian Simpson, it's the first time we've seen Brian Simpson run away from a punt. And uh, pretty decent field position, though, for the Mariners coming back. We're approaching 10 minutes to go in the ball game, so who knows what else can happen. Willie's still limping a little bit gingerly there on the sideline, trying to get some feeling back in that ankle. You know, I think, David, when that happens, you go through the initial hurt when you really have the pain, then it gets a little bit squishy, and then maybe in about three minutes you feel you can go on it again. Willie's in the middle of that. And then the next day, it's three times the size <laughs> of the basketball that Kevin Fury plays with. Okay, Clark the Beers, this is the time for a ball control offense, and they want to see if they can just pound away. Beers got a good thrust on that one, took it to about the 37-yard line, maybe the 38, depends on the spot. And the spot is going to be at the 38-yard line for about a three, maybe a four-yard gain. You like that on first down, second and six coming up, and we're under 10 minutes to go. Wonder now if this becomes a ball control game for Kings Point. That has been their strength, their ability to grind it out on the ground, keep that clock moving now that we're inside of 10. It's interesting. They weren't able to do it in the third period, but you know that's what they're going to want to do. Now they're going to go to the try and go to the ball control passing type game that has been the most effective offensive weapon in the second half. That one to Fury down low and away for ball one. I think Warrington may have got a piece of that on the way in. Fouled it off. But that's, low. But that's also where you want to throw that ball, of course. If you're not going to be able to get it, you want to throw it so he can either he makes the very good catch or no one can pick it off because there were some people around him. Another big down for the WPI defense. Third and six. They need to stop. And they need the ball back down by seven. What's what's the uh, what are we looking at? Vol Volkert right around the 45 in the middle. He's Here. been the go-to guy as he goes in motion. As they roll to the right, Bur uh, Clark looking for him. He escapes trouble. He's got Laskowski after him. End a lot of room, and Fulwin is going to try and track him down. He goes over the 50 penalty flag down there as he goes out about the 47 yard line. Don Joseph hurt on the play as well on the far side of the field, but nice job by Clark to get out of trouble in the pocket. And we have a personal foul. That probably would be Fu Win, and that's number two. It's number three. three actually. We had the uh, bizarre piling on penalty in the middle of the field as well. That is three big penalties against Fu Win. Maybe a little bit over eager here today. I wonder though about Brian Clark's decision making on this play because he had Volkert who'd run under Dave, had gone out in front, 
but I'd like to take another look at this because this play takes a long time to unfold. Plenty of time again in the backfield. Volker coming in the motion man coming back the other way. He's free. There's no one ahead of him now. Clark could have flipped him the ball and given him room to run. Instead, he decides to run himself. That makes Volker come back to block when he could have gone downfield. And here we're right back to action. Clark to Kevin Duffy. Number 80 on, uh, sorry, Keith Ergel on the play, and it's nice rolling to the right. I think the problem with Clark, John, was the fact that he was running in full speed. It would have been tough to come back across his body, and he used Volker as the blocker. Well, now we see the effect of that penalty on who win. Big call, because it moved them well down into WPI territory. Now they come up with a nice pass to Keith Ergel for another first down. All kinds of momentum going in the way of the Mariners now. Almost nine minutes left in the game, and they're inside the 20. I'll tell you what, Monday's film session is going to be kind of scary. There goes Beers, and he's just wrapped up, but keeps on going. How strong is his upper body to take that blow, come back and keep running as he goes across the 15-yard line? Doesn't really pick up much, so we're going to have a second and 10. But Drew Beers takes a lot to bring him down. He had three big guys waiting to greet him, too. Tom Duby and Matt Mercer, among others. And again, Beers shook off that initial hit and just started grinding away. No gain, but still an impressive display by Drew Beers. And there's Jason Woolley getting his right ankle rewrapped. They try and put, take the tape off his foot. They're going to give it a rewrap. This is a crucial situation for WPI. They have got to hold here with about eight minutes to go in the ball game. They're on the 15-yard line. Here goes Fury in motion in the slot. They're going to look for him in the slide. And uh, Clark runs out of trouble. And he's taking it down the sideline with some room. Gets it over the 10 and gets wrapped out of bounds. Taken out of bounds on the play. Chris Moore makes the play. Matt Barrows almost made the play in the backfield. Couldn't catch up. Chris Moore makes the tackle number 20 as he takes Clark out of bounds. Another play. Good pursuit again by Wheeler. The defensive end coming in here forces him outside. Clark is happy to take it, but instead of running out of bounds again, he makes a little juke here, freezes the linebackers, and then turns it back up. Picks up about two or three yards. The hit is worthwhile because it gives them a third and four now from about the eight-yard line. Actually, it was Mercer who missed him in the backfield. And Barrows made the tackle down the sideline. And Clark fumbles and loses it, and then he goes down, and a bad time to make a mistake. Laskowski makes the play as he tracks down Clark, who picked it up and tried to get out of trouble, couldn't get away. Watch this more, one more time here. Probably going to go in the books as a sack because he was trying to break away the pass. Laskowski in quick pursuit. Hard to tell in this case. If it is, it's only their third sack of the season. Clark goes down, loses about eight yards on the play. It'll be fourth and 13. And they're going to go for it. No, they're not. O'Connell is on the field. Last time he went for a field goal, it got blocked. He's going to kick it from the 25. It is up. It is hit. It is short. And WPI dodges a bullet. Somebody got a hand on it. I'm not sure who it was. It comes up short, and the engineers will get the ball at their own 20-yard line. Makes the surgical, makes the procedure on Woolley all the more important here. O'Connell hits it square. Let's see if we can get a hand on it here. The big leap in the middle by number. I think it was Kevin Renucci. It looks like to me he got a piece of it. Yep. Renucci will get credit for the partial Looks block. picturesque there, I'll tell you that. It looked like it was going, but it just came up short. It reminds me of a recent New England Patriots game. Looks Coming like, uh, okay, engineers break the huddle. Willie is not in the ball game. Ernie Ansa is there. He's the lone setback. Now Padula is in motion, and they're going right, and they give it to Ansa, looking for room to run. Nowhere to go, and he makes it to the 20, and then is driven back and uh, probably going to give his progress to about the 20, which would mean no gain, and we'll have a second and 10 situation. Dan Sell among the Mariner defenders in there to make the hit. Quick, quick huddle, no huddle now, moving the ball quickly here. Now Answer goes into the slot, Burns looking to move, and he is drilled from behind by number 79. Again. Big number 79, Dan Sell came in from the right tackle spot, and he just, the pocket just collapsed on Burns. And uh, both sell and vote hitting quickly. As you said, David, the pocket simply collapsed on Burns, had nowhere to go. I think he was looking downfield, looking to pick up something big, but he didn't even have time to think about it. Sell coming right through the middle, shakes two as the pocket tries to form. Sell with the first hit and vote to close it off. 
Third and seven down and 17 yards to go. Burns looking to pass. Got some decent protection. He's got Johnson at the 30, and that's good for a first down. Johnson, a good catch off his back, off his right hip as he turned. He was running left. He got it and took it to the 33-yard line, and we have got an injured player on the field. Looks like another look here. Johnson becoming the possession receiver on this day for the Engineers. Makes the catch, turns it upfield just enough for the first down. A well-selected route. And with another player injured on the field, we'll be back after this message. Introducing Don Imus. This is the finest morning radio program in the history of this medium, and it will save these, it will save all of these hideous radio stations that we go on, won't it? You going national, you being syndicated, is simply a, to, to further feed your bloated, fat-head, porcine ego. <laughs> Just shut up. I miss in the morning, weekdays from 6 to 10, on Sports Radio WEEI. Engineers with a first and 10 from the 32-yard line. They go to Padula, who's got all kinds of room over the 40. He's past the 50. He's over. Padula broke through on kind of a delayed draw and then just broke it free and kicked tip it all the way down to the 11-yard line and WPI is right back in striking this. And Padula made his name as a short yardage guy. And undoubtedly the longest run of the season for him. Thought he was going to run out of gas there for a second, but actually he was slowing down to put a move on Kane. Froze him in his track, picked up an extra 25 yards. Big play by Padula. 527 left in the ball game, and they've got all kinds of time now. Pitt Leahy has it, and he's over the 15 to about, looks like about the 11-yard line. I made him, uh, the check that on the original line of scrimmage was the 16. That's where Padula went down, so it's about a five-yard gain. Matt Leahy with the heavily taped right ankle. We saw him come out after picking up a first down earlier. Let's take another look at this. Padula shoots right through that line of scrimmage, and at that point, there's a lot of room for him. He doesn't really wheel, but he puts that fake on Kane leaves him behind and at that point now it's up to the linebackers to pull him down from behind Padula's previous long run was 13 yards he just beat that by 50 under five minutes to go Anson with the ball and he's hit immediately by Alex Real check that Steve Monson got him in the backfield that Anson kind of fought him off and took it maybe to the 15 yard line for no gain so we're at third down actually they're going to give him a half a yard gain we're at third down and four to go kicking away towards four minutes left in the ball game the engineers have got to get it in the end zone this time john big time here maybe time for a timeout as they have to think this one over this is the ball game for the engineers right now they're going to take two plays as a timeout let's take a break the average grand prix lasts but a few hours unless it's a grand prix started with a genuine delco freedom battery Delco's rated tops for taking the pole position in starting power and excelling in reserve capacity. Helps keep your engine in the race for a longer, more reliable life. AC Delco. It's like buying time. Now through December 4th, get started with up to $14 cash back on Delco Freedom Batteries. Moment of Truth is back for WPI. Third down and four ball on the 11-yard line. As you can see, just about 15 ticks away from four minutes. Could be the final possession. Willie stays on the sideline. Answer the deep man in the, in the eye. Wide, wide side of the field. They're going to go with a reverse. And Swedek is tackled in the backfield by Curris, number 47, the biggest defensive play of the game. He goes down at the 23. What can you say about that? The play just took too long to unfold. The handoff to answer the pitch, actually, he breaks to his right, pardon me, his left, and he gets Swedek coming back the other way, and they sniff this out all the way. The Mariner defense, Curris is there, Steve that Brody. backup from Brody, and they just snuff that play before it could even get off the drawing board. That leaves the Mariners, pardon me, the Engineers with a fourth and 17 now, and it's do or die time. They have to go for it. This could be a time where you want to time out, too. They're not going to do it, though. Here comes the blitz. A lot of pressure on Burns. He breaks free, and he looks into the end zone. And Johnson for the touchdown! What a pass! Johnson found a hole in the zone and got his third touchdown in the ballgame. Burns had all 
kinds of time to think about this. And David, I actually think he considered tucking the ball under his arm. They're waiting here now for some kind of flag. There are no flags on the field. Watch here as Tom Burns makes a big decision. The pocket forms around him, and he steps up. He has two things in mind. One is run, one is pass. A great block, and look at him now. He waits and squeezes people, and somehow he threads it right through there. Finds Johnson in the back line again. He hangs out there. There's no way to stop that play. Big touchdown. Brings the engineers within a point at 37-36. What are they going to do? There's a moment of indecision. Let's take, or a moment for the decision. Let's take a break. Let's go meet some winners. So now, how much did you win? Just under two million. Just under two million. Care to tell us how much win? Three point four million. One point eight million. Well, how much did you win, for example? Four hundred thirteen thousand. I've hit it twice uh, last year for a thousand, and once the year before for a thousand. How much have you won? Seven point two million. Seven point two million. That's a lot of millions. That's a couple of bucks here and there. Yeah, you're a modest man <laughs> about your enormous means. So, what does it feel like to win that much money? It feels great. moment of decision for WPI. They trail by a point. The kicker is not in the ball game for the fifth time today. They are going for a two-point conversion. They are three for four. They're going to do it with four wideouts, and Padula is in the H-back situation, so there's nobody in the backfield. Burns is going to look into the corner, and he throws it behind Johnson, and they're going crazy on the far side of the field. Johnson's look of disgust on his face, passes behind him, tried to lock him up and come back for the ball as Pete skidded out behind, from under him. So that effort goes awry. That leaves the engineers a point short now at 37-36, and they have to kick the ball away to the Mariners. With a little over three minutes to go in the ball game. Have to give Kevin Morris credit, Dave, for going for the two-point conversion. Absolutely. Didn't work out. They trail by one. Now it's up to the defense. They're going to have to get the ball back from the Mariners. Absolutely. That is a move. You're out here. You're trying to win a game, and you're teaching people to accept challenge, and that's exactly what they did. you got to like that move. We spoke earlier today about how they were just getting their ship righted after a rocky beginning, losing their first three. They had a big win over Norwich last week. They really want this game to set the tone for the rest of their season as they go into the Freedom Football schedule. And right now, Kevin Morris is doing it the right way. It just didn't work out the way he planned. Pat Dye would have went for the kick against East Carolina or somebody like that. And what would Arrow Parsegian have done? Hey, this game has got a long way with the way things have been going. A lot has happened. John, you're dating yourself. There. <laughs> Hopefully we have an old demographic on the audience. <laughs> John, of course, refers to the famous 10-10 tie in 1966. Tie one Michigan for the Gipper. State, <laughs> Absolutely. Notre Dame. Ira Parsegian ran out the clock when Notre Dame recovered the, or had the ball in the last minute or so and took the tie. Give Kevin Morris credit, and now here we go with the kick. And Farrell's going to kick it away kicks it into an open area. Kings Point had a, 10 guys on the line of scrimmage. The ball goes out of bounds. There go the penalty flags at the 22-yard line, and that took one second off the clock. It's very hard to do a spot kick like that off the tee. He was trying to kind of pooch it into the area where there were no Kings Point players. Went for the sideline, just got too much of it kicked out on him. Tell you what, he had good backspin. I wish I could get a got one of my wedge shots to drop like that and stay right where it was. I think the Mariners have decided to decline the penalty, however. They're going to take possession of the ball at about the 35-yard line. Now, timeouts come into play. WPI has already taken one on the third down play, so they're one short. So they have got to stop Kings Point in four downs, and they got some trouble. And my guess would be that the Mariners would be keeping the ball on the ground to try and keep that clock moving, keep it in the middle of the field, look for them to go to Beers. And that's exactly what they do. Beers has some running room, and then he's stuck and stop gets it maybe to the 42 yard line which would be about a two yard gain clock ticks away 310 as you can see 311 i lied but i was close enough but uh that's going to be a second and eight situation the wpi needs their defense they certainly can move the ball up and down the field so the amount of time if they can get it back is not going to be something that would prevent them from scoring for sure Two guys in the backfield, Raganis and Beers. They fake the Beers, and they're looking downfield deep to Fury, who's there, and there's some contact. 
Maganis checked that. Renucci had his hand on Fury's back, and there's no call. Gutsy call stops the call. Kind of a strange play, the way that unfolded. Uh, a lot of play action here, freezing people, giving him time to work face to both backs in the field. Blocked by Beers. And Clark works downfield and just kind of hangs it up here. I think he kind of overthrew because Fury stopped early, tried to go up and get it over his head. Renucci had turned the wrong way. Ball fell through his hand. Third to stop the clock. Third and eight. 243, as you can see. Third and eight. Here comes a reverse to Fury. Cuts it on the inside. He's not going anywhere. He goes down to 34 yard line. That one took quite a while to develop. Chuck Warrington with a big tackle here for the engineer defense. Maybe the biggest of the day thus far. And he, he real not only did he make the tackle, he turned it inside. Watch this play unfold. Fury, a good runner in the open field, was thinking about it, had no real good containment by Warrington. Stepped up and tried to turn it in, didn't have to, completed the play himself. Fourth and 11 I like for the Mariners. Call. I like that call. Didn't really fool the engineers, but that's the call. He needed about eight yards, and they didn't want to throw it again. Okay, the clock is ticking away. We're close to two minutes. Fury back to pass. Ten, nine guys in the line of scrimmage for the engineers. Fury's got to get rid of it in a hurry. Took his time, and it's going to go fair catch to Lohan, and he drops the ball at the 20, and he recovers it inside of the 15-yard line. Why not make it exciting? <laughs> 147. Pardon me, David. As we watch here, he gets a little bit of wind drift on him, rolls off to his left side, can't get his body in front of it, squirts away, probably loses 11 yards in the indecision again. Luckily able to do the hook slide and fall on the ball, come up with it, which leaves the engineers in business at about the six, pardon me, about the 14 yard line. They've got 86 yards to go and 147 in which to do it. And Jason Willie has not come back in the game again. Ansa is in. He's in the wide, he's in a slot to the right-hand side, three guys slot right. Burns rolls and throws the ball to Johnson. Did a good job just to get rid of it because number 46, Steve Monson, was coming in on the blitz from the right-hand side of the Kings Point side of the field, and uh, he had him wrapped up in the legs. I think that was a poised play by Burns, too. I think that was as much a throwaway as anything else. He happened to put it in the direction of Johnson, but he got enough on it to make sure it was out of bounds. Can't risk an interception on your first shot from that area. Well, and the other thing is you can't risk a, 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 sack. a sack because you can't stop the clock. They've only got two timeouts left, I believe. If um, spotter Andrea Solomita is correct, they've got two timeouts left. Burns going back. He's looking for Lohan, and he throws it behind him. Once again, nice rush. Some pressure on him there. Dan Sell was in on that play. One of the guys put, possessed Steve Brody from the nose guard, so they're pressuring from the line. Not holding a lot back there, John, in the off no. defensive line. No, they don't have to. They know they have to pass. And at third and ten, I think right now what you might look for from WPI is something to take advantage of that pursuit. Maybe a screenplay. Let them come through, jump it into the flat with a couple of blockers and see what they can do. They've got to get ten yards to keep the drive alive. Again, try and use the pursuit to see what they can do. Tough to throw a screen pass, though, when you have nobody in the backfield. All they have to do is get in the field goal range here. They don't need the touchdown. Burns back to pass on third down. He's looking, he's throwing deep. That's going out of bounds to Johnson. And, and they are down to their last gas with 129. Let's take a break. We come back. Fourth and ten. Burns looking over the middle and he throws it to Swedish. Who scores? He scores it and it comes up into the 37-yard line. As it's starting to blow me, I'm glad they get this goal. What a catch in the last gas. And he bottled it all the way down but held on David Swedish. Another look in here. Tom Burns with all 
kinds of time waiting for a receiver to get first down yardage. He has to let them clear that area. He looks and finds Swedek, puts a little bit of soft touch on it, floats it in a little juggle, and he comes down with the ball, juggling it all the way onto the floor, David. Pulls it down for the first down. And while we were away, the uh, WCI in their haste to get the game moving ran off on first down. Burns had a pass really that didn't develop. It was blocked at the line of scrimmage. So we're looking at a second and 10 with 113 left in the ball game. Play will start at the 36 yard line for WPI. And Lohan comes out of the ball game. And we've got the wideouts. Three guys once again set up on the left hand side. Burns look I mean on the right hand side. Burns looking on the right hand side. He's throwing deep. Deep. Obviously, I was a math major in college. <laughs> That's exactly what they should do. Why break the string here? WPI has run their lead to 42-37. There's 101 left on the clock. They're ready for the conversion now. Will it be one or two? I should mention next next week we're going to be in Bridgewater, Massachusetts for Division Three football. Plymouth State College taking on Bridgewater State. And Burns on the handoff to Badula. Fooled everybody. Padula took that quick draw. That's the same play where he broke out for the 70-yard run. Take a look at the touchdown one more time. That moves it up to seven. And now in two points scores, they're going to have to go for two. This view from the end zone camera. Again, the only receiver downfield is Ernie Anta. And he gets a step on Peter Gunther, and it's off to the races. Gunther with the dive has no chance. Hansa just legs it in the rest of the way. He went 40 yards untouched, and he didn't stop at the goal line, David. He carried it well past the end zone into the engineer sign down at the end of the scoreboard. Pardon me, he started celebrating. Big day for Ernie Hansa, three touchdowns, and they're whooping it up on the Worcester sideline. Okay, John, your King's point. What are you going to do? You got 101 left in the ball game. First of all, what kind of kick do you send off the WPI? Well, I think we've seen how aggressive Simpson is, and I think they had some good success last time. They tried to hit it into the middle. 86 yards on that WPI drive, the big play, the pass to Anta. I think he tucked it underneath, and we saw Kings Point try and go into a two-minute drill at the end of the first half. They can use the sidelines. They have Fury. They have Volker, who's come up big. They are not out of this game with 101 left to play. 44-37. We have seen many lead changes in this ball game. 101 left. Kings Point is going to have the last time, and is this going to be a game the last guys who have the ball win the game? Like the NBA. Except the first three quarters were exciting in this one, too. Shouldn't say that. I'm a big basketball fan. NBA fan. Now ready to let it go. The question is, who will be on the receiving end? They have Beers back. Simpson is the deep man. I think they got a line driving. It goes to Beers. One guy to send it to. Beers, he's got some room on the left-hand side, and he is free for a moment, and then takes it up to the 35-yard line. It's the guy I don't think I would hit the ball at. 
And there's a penalty flag. And that is a big penalty at the 35. Actually, it looks Matt Leahy comes running off the field pointing at King's Point. So that gives the referees, the officials are pointing that way as well. By the way, it's going to be a painful penalty. And here we see Beers taking it up into the middle. Had a moment of daylight there. A good, good play to stick with him. Number 15, Don Joseph, able to spin him enough so that they could pull him down. But the penalty being stepped off now against the Mariners really makes their task that much more difficult, David. Of course, that's what we said when Lohan dropped the punt and it went back about another 15 yards. So maybe we're just looking at something that makes life a little bit more exciting. But as you can see, less than a minute to go. And uh, King's point, I don't think this game is over by any stretch of the imagination. Three wide outs to the right, Clark back to pass. And he is under big pressure, and it's going to be Barrows, the linebacker, flips from the right-hand side, number 56. Quick play, quick play right back on the line. No huddle offense. Clark presence, is in the shotgun. Presence of mind by the freshman, Barrows. Here comes Clark, gets it out to Fury. He's got to get out of bounds. And didn't have much to do with it. Waffle drove him out of bounds back here at the penetration and the pursuit by WPI. Clark takes a snap, fakes a reverse pivot, and is going to roll to his right before he can get on track. Barrows with a great shoot, shoots right through, wraps up the feet, pulls him down. A big sack for the WPI defense. Now they're faced with a third and 14. That was Barrows' first sack of the season. And Barrows, a big play for the freshman, as we mentioned. They've got to push the ball up field. King Point does. And now they're in trouble. It's just thrown up. And here comes Fuya. Oh! Up about four guys. Who Young was there on the reception, and from that look, we know why he plays linebacker. He kind of got a little bit lost in that, but he was deep in the coverage, and there was no gain. So, good play by the Worcester native. Who win took one, making on the forehead for the team. That's right. But with that play, maybe he'll make that uh, film session a little bit better off the uh, three penalties that he was involved in. Now the point looks like they're taking a timeout. 19 seconds remaining in the game. Fourth down and 14. This is the latest critical play of the game. And there have been many. Let's take a break and we'll come back to that play. You need to think before you speak with Don Imus. Get out. Get a We're job. Get a job. That's the first thing you can do. <laughs> Work for a living. Just shut up. Imus in the morning. Ready? This quality time was made possible by GMAC. With financing and leasing that can be arranged for your new GM vehicle fast, right at the dealership. Because GMAC believes you should be out enjoying your new car instead of waiting for it to be financed. Well, what'd you think? Can we go again? GMAC, the expressway home. Ready? Merchant Marine Academy are down to their last play, 19 seconds ago, fourth and 14. Everybody wide, three wide outs to the left, Kevin Fury to the right. Clark back to pass, he's got some trouble. He's looking downfield and he's in pursuit. He's gonna look like he's running for the first down and he might have pulled up short, out of bounds. He had to get to the 29 and he stepped out of bounds. Well, it, looks it, like the, short. it looks like the 28 to me. Take another look here. The official who's marking the sideline, calling for the ball. Looks like he would be short of it. They're going to measure. But watch Clark now. He's got a lot of pressure coming at him from the middle. He was looking to his left. Had to roll right. Still thinking pass. Decides to tuck it under. He's got some open ground in front of him, David. But I think you're right. He's running on the side of the field, away from the markers. Not sure he knew where he was going. And it looks like he went out short. Well, you know, the other thing that he had to contend with, if he dove inside to, the, to get the first down, the clock runs out. So unless they have a timeout left, we're not sure what the situation is, but I don't think he's going to get this first down. I think it's going back over to WPI. Too bad we couldn't get a good shot out of it, right? There it is. Missed it by a yard, and WPI, unless Joe Pisarczyk is going in the game, looks like they have taken a very big upset and taken their next step uh, toward riding the ship. They lead it by seven with nine seconds to go. 
riding the ship, if you're borrowing a little bit of a nautical metaphor from the Merchant Marine Academy, David, it's well-intended humor. Certainly, this is a big situation for WPI. We're going to have to get out of this game early, and all I can say is this has just been a tremendous college football game on both sides. It's too bad an undefeated season has to end. I know we're counting them out a little bit early, but an undefeated season has to end with a game like this. It's just been a great representation by both schools. And there it is. Burns takes the snap and goes down on one knee. They're going to count out the clock. And we have no time left. The ball game is over. The engineers of Worcester Polytech win it 44-37. Thanks for tuning in.